I'm gonna need this guy. <laughs> That's the go. That's the we're going. We've gone live. That's the we've gone live sound. That's the we've gone live. Oh, that's signal. nice. <laughs> that's not bad. That's a better way to start than that's that's a you know hey, or, uh, <laughs> like the old um, internet. Remember, Big remember the uh, the internet dial up? <laughs> yeah, that dial up. Hi everybody. Sorry, don't mind us. We're <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> We're just prattling on about sound effects, you know, We've, uh, typical conversation we're here. We're stuffed with chicken and turkey, <laughs> so we're a little bit, we can't, like, think straight. Yes. It's Thanksgiving here in Canada, so um, we've, we're having kind of a, a long weekend. Uh, tomorrow is our Thanksgiving holiday, and um, today, it kind of depends. People kind of hold their family dinners whenever they obviously can, when schedules allow. Things are a little funny this year, obviously. Thank you, 2020. Um, <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, but uh, we do have a lot to be thankful for this weekend. Um, in addition to to just you know still being here and uh, all of us still managing to have some health, we're very grateful for that. We're also very thankful to all of you because we've hit a rather large milestone on our YouTube channel. We have four hundred thousand now plus subscribers. So thank you so much. I would like to clap. I would also like to ring and yes, clap sweet. at the same time. You clap all oh, ring. Oh, that's that's. <laughs> I can't do that. We need one of those soundboards where you can have like like the cheering crowd. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Where you, you press know? the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the those old. Those terrible uh, radio shows. The, the, like, <laughs> boing, boing, boing. Those game show sounds, you know. Oh, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Wah, boom, boom, you know. Wah. <laughs> it's the wrong button. You're the, the wrong button. the wrong button. <laughs> we are getting lots of th uh, congratulations and. Um, Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving in the chat. This is them. I want to make a little clarification too. A lot of you may not be very familiar with Canadian Thanksgiving, uh, especially those of you in the states who you you have Thanksgiving um, on the around the on or around the twenty fifth of November. I understand. Um, our Thanksgiving is a little different. Our Thanksgiving is about the harvest. It follows the harvest, and obviously, being in the Great White North, our harvest happens a lot earlier than a lot of the harvests do in. The United States. So we have our Thanksgiving around the bounty and the, being grateful for the harvest. That's why it's sooner. That's why it's sooner. Mm -hmm. It's here in uh, the second, usually around the second weekend in October. Um, it does, I guess the date changes every year, but it's usually the second weekend in October. Um, yeah. Second does weekend the date officially change every year? Yeah, because the second weekend out in October isn't always like the 10th or something. But it, it always... Yeah, it always kind of ends up in the middle of the month, sort of. Yeah, yeah, because the second week of October, second there weekend in go. October can move a little bit. So is it officially today, the 11th, or is it officially it's tomorrow. tomorrow? It's officially the 12th. tomorrow, the 12th. I see. Yeah, so Thanksgiving is technically tomorrow. That's the holiday, but this is the whole weekend, so... Um, yeah, so all of the, and it was actually kind of neat, we went out for a little drive yesterday, and Yay! all of the big potato trucks and the corn trucks, everybody's, all of the, the farmers are like, hauling you know the last little bit of the harvest out of the ground and they're going into the way stations and they're weighing all of their their produce and it's very much a celebratory feel everybody's got pumpkins and hay bales out on their front uh, their front porches and um little gourds sitting along the fence lines and stuff and it's just all the all the colors of the trees have sort of gone so we've got a lot of rich reds and crimsons and golds and oranges and there actually are a lot of trees that haven't turned yet so I guess maybe we're going to have a little bit more warm weather than uh, than we anticipated, which I'm fine with. I don't. I love I love October weather here. It's like warm but not cold, but not like icy and not too hot, so that you can still wear like you know your new poncho or something and not be overheating. Um, so yeah, I love that. I don't, and everything smells really nice. All the all the leaves and pine needles and everything coming down, and being stomped underfoot, smells so good. Mm. <sighs> So, it does. Yes. Anyway, this is definitely one of the best weekends of the year, in my humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so that aside, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, and if you celebrate celebrate along with us, even if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, because why not? It's always good to be thankful. And um, today we thought it would be a lot of fun to do a very simple ribbed hat crochet along. Uh, so we put it to the family and uh, the vote is in. It's definitely a, a hat crochet along. Um, this is a super simple pattern. You may even have made one like it in the past. So this is why we thought it would be a great pattern to do as a, a live tutorial. Um, we've got some helpful sizing information in the description box to start. Let's clarify a little bit of that. Sure. So do you want to explain how you can see the description box when you're on a computer? Oh, yeah. 
Um, so, you go ahead. <laughs> if you're on a computer or a laptop, the description box is a little more easy to see underneath the video player. Um, there'll be like a little box. There might even be a show more button that it literally says show more. Yes. And you just and click have, on that and the box will drop down. A lot of information there. Yeah, we've got links. And, and it gets missed and, and unseen from a lot of uh, viewers. Now, so. if you're watching on a, a tablet or a phone, which is where a lot of people watch from, it's even harder to find. Thank you very much, YouTube. <laughs> It's it's not there at all. It's it's not. Yeah, you actually have to. There's a little tiny inty binty gray down arrow yes. that sits right underneath your video. your video um, player. Uh -huh. And if you click that, it'll drop down the entire description box. So um, later on, if you're watching this after the video live tutorial has ended, um, you can go in there and find the information. The information is there right now. So if you need to refer to it at any time, go ahead. And if I'm sure people will be kind of popping in and out during the course of our live stream. So if anybody's asking, you know, you know, how long do I make it or how big do I make it or what have I missed or whatever, then you guys who are here now can help us to just sort of point them in the right direction. Uh, we're of course going to explain how you can size yourself, but we thought it would be helpful to have some common sizing. And I underline the word common. I know we're all very different, <laughs> um, but uh, common sizing in the description box. There are two sizes. There is row length and row height. So when I say row length, I mean literally the length of the row that you're working back and forth. And the row count will always be the same. It'll be unique to all of us, so don't worry about a specific stitch count. Just know that every row will be the same stitch count. So turn your brain off and just crochet. And the row height is going to be a measurement that is equal to the circumference of your head or the head you're making it for. So that's why those two measurements are different. But row length is literally how tall your hat is going to be, not to be confused with row height, which is how wide it's going to be. <laughs> because we're making the we're making the hat um, we're making the hat width wise as opposed to height wise. So it's a little bit different, but that's what makes it easy. Yes, Mr. In Stitches. I have to interrupt you. Okay. Because we've got a super chat from yeah. Sarah who says, Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and we have a super sticker oh from Mary. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> it's the cute little fox going, Bravo, Aww. Bravo. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, as another big thank you to all of you, today's pattern is going to be all written up and it's going to be available for free over on our website on the pattern workshop page. Now, it's not there yet because I like to include a photograph with our patterns when we put them together. And I thought I would literally include a pattern of the hat that I make today um, in that pattern so that you'll be able to recognize it. And um, it's going to be called the easy ribbed hat pattern. And we will have that up by Tuesday this week. Um, it's our Thanksgiving weekend. It's a little nutty. So <laughs> by Tuesday this week, we'll have that pattern up on the, um, the workshop page on our web website. It'll be free. And we will also just post a little note in the community tab um, when we do have it live. So just in case you kind of forget or, you know, it's a busy weekend, um, we'll also just remind you that it's there. And if you're wondering how to see community posts, there is a community tab on our channel homepage. But also, if you're logged into YouTube, our community posts should show up in your subscription feed. Not to be confused with your home feed, which is what you automatically see when you turn on YouTube. And I'm confused. In. So... <laughs> But you might even see it in your home feed, but it will definitely be in your subscription feed. And if you have your notifications turned on, it'll also show up in the little notification area. Jeez. We're trying to help everyone because <laughs> we get lots of questions on how to navigate stuff. So we it's, have to share. There's so many places that you can find stuff. So we do. And try tomorrow to it'll all change. And tomorrow it'll all be different. YouTube yes. will move the, the arrow button from the right <laughs> to the left. And then they'll put this button from the top to the bottom. Yes. Just for fun. Just for fun. Just yeah. like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That is a, a celebratory ding for our new subscriber oh. level. But also, <laughs> this is for Michelle. Michelle. Michelle gave us a super chat thank and you, says, Michelle. thank you for the crochet community today. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I think that's the word of the day. Thank you. Actually, it's two words. Oh, yeah. Guess. Thankful, being thankful. thankful, definitely the mm -hmm. word of the day, thankful, because it's Thanksgiving <laughs> and we're giving thanks. Okay, let's jump into this hat tutorial. This is a ribbed hat. Um, this is one of those things where you're just making one rectangular piece of fabric and it's going to wrap around your head. There's going to be a seam. We're going to cinch in the top. 
You can turn up the bottom for a brim. And then of course you can add a big pom-pom. So this is one of those crazy pom-poms we made in a live stream a little while ago. So if you're wondering what to do with them, you can put one of these on top of your hat today. You could also put several of them on your hat if you've got a whole bunch of them and they're a bit smaller, because why not? We are going to talk about hat construction, how to maybe turn it into a little more of a Halloween-y costume -y thing, if that's what you're into. And if you have questions about hat construction or about turning a hat into a little more of a costumey related thing or about fibers, um, please feel free to ask questions in the chat. Mr. and Stitches is going to do his best to kind of like keep track of everything and um, we'll we'll sort of answer some questions as we go. Big thank you to JC for the JC. super chat. Thank you, JC. JC says, I can't stay long, but wanted to say hey and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, JC. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you also for that cute poem you left over on Mr. and Stitches' oh, channel. Oh, that one was so good. <laughs> The squirrel video. That was great. Yeah, if any of you haven't seen that, Mr. and Stitches has uh, his own channel, and he put up a cute little video about how we prepare for a live stream. Yes. If you're curious <laughs> yes, of how curious. we get ready and what we need to do. And JC left a wonderful poem underneath that. So um, if you have time, please feel to check that out. Yeah. And um, later on, we'll make sure that link is in the description box as well. Okay, so. Wait, there before are... we start, big thank you to every color, Kel. <laughs> Cal, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, my new kitten, Poutine. <laughs> <laughs> Love, that's a cute name that, for a little kitten. That's perfect. Put, poutine or Poutin? It's Poutin. It depends on where you're from. Well, it's, that's how you say it. Poutin. Poutin is the, is the I'm going to say Poutine because that's my way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> My new little kitten, Poutine, uh, loves to play with the soft crochet balls and mouses. We are th we are thankful thankful for you guys. Thank you. And Pink Mama Aww. sends a um, sticker, <laughs> a, fo a little fox smiling. Thank you. Big thank you to Pink Mama. Pink Mama. I love that. Thank you so much. Okay, so I don't want to keep interrupting you with sure. the tutorial. So do you want to, maybe we'll read out Super Chats at the end? We will or, read them out in little we'll, blocks. We'll, we'll read to, them out in blocks. Yeah, I will try to do little blocks of tutorial. Yeah, that way we can all catch up with ourselves. That. Yeah, and, let's um, do that. And then we will keep the conversation going. Okay, right. so a couple things. Um, today, we're going to be using a super bulky weight yarn. Um, and that's a size six yarn. If you don't have a super bulky, you can hold two strands of five weight like a bulky or a chunky weight together you could hold three strands of a nice size four weight together if you've only got uh, um, dk weight yarn then three or four strands of that held together would be fine i'm going to say for an adult sized hat you are going to want at least 150 to 175 yards of the super bulky and then if you're multi-layering your strands, 150 to 175 yards per strand, just to be on the safe side, um, because you always wanna err on the side of having a little too much yarn rather than not enough. So I'm using a super bulky size six today. Um, I found a green that matches kind of the green of that crazy pom-pom I made, so I'll be using that. Um, you want a big hook, so you have your choice. This is comes down to what you feel comfortable with, what you like the stitch tension look with. I recommend an eight millimeter, which is an L or an 11 in the US, a nine millimeter or a 10 millimeter. So an eight millimeter being the smallest, nine and 10 being incrementally larger than the L11. Um, but you can use whatever hook feels comfortable for you and what you like the look of with your chunky, bulky, super bulky weight yarn. I have um, a little sampler of the, this is, so there's another little thing. You can use either single crochet or half double crochet with this project. You can use either stitch. You wanna stick to it. So if you start with single, stick with single. If you start with half double crochet, stick with that one. So you can use either stitch. Obviously half double crochet is going to create a wide piece of fabric a lot faster. So if you're in a hurry, then go with a half double crochet and it doesn't change the pattern at all. Um, but if you want a more closer together ribbed look, then go with a single crochet. So this is half double crochet. We're working back and forth like this. This is the height of the hat. Um, and then of course, as we add rows, it's going to create the width of the hat, but we're working back and forth. So um, you're kind of working your hat sideways if you want to look at it that way. That's the half double crochet. I wanted to show that to you because I wanted an example. I will be 
the single crochet, but that's what the half looks like in the rib stitch. Really nice, nothing wrong with that. It's got some nice stretch to it. Um, and uh, that's a chunky weight yarn using the size eight millimeter hook. That's the hook size that I'm gonna be using today. But again, you can use any hook size that you're comfortable with, with your chosen yarn. So this is not based on stitch count, it's based on measurement. That's why I love this hat pattern so much. Um, so that is what the half double crochet looks like. I'm going to just get that out of my way here. Um, you might want a measuring tape, especially if you're making this for somebody who's not readily available. This is what's going to allow you to kind of keep just tra tracking your measurements as you go. Um, and it will help you initially so that you know your foundation chain, how big that needs to be to start with. I'm going to tell you how many I end up chaining so that you kind of have an idea. I'm making this hat to fit me and my head circumference is around 22 um, inches. Is that right? Yeah, 22 inches. I'm a 20. <clears throat> Let me check. <laughs> you know what? Yes, I'm 22 inches. <laughs> we got another super okay. chat. <laughs> I can't help but interrupt you. It's it's very exciting. Yeah. Do this like is from Victoria. Victoria. Victoria says, thank Happy you, Victoria. Thanksgiving and thank you for giving us so much inspiration for projects. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm 22 inches around. So you can have an idea of basically how big my hat is based on um, so you might want to, you, you can use my, my baseline as sort of whether you need to go up or go down. Um, and of course I'm using an eight millimeter hook, but a measuring tape is really handy to have. And I highly recommend having that one on hand. A uh, pair of scissors and a yarn needle. That's it. Um, I've got a big eye needle today because I'm using the super bulky weight yarn. Grab your big hook and your yarn and that's all you really need. Let's get started. I'm just going to put my gigantic pom-pom to the side and let's fire up the craft table, Mr. and Stitches. And um, I'm going to get comfortable here. I've got my little back breast cushion. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to put my scissors and my yarn needle out of the way and I don't need my pom-pom so I'll just put that out of the way too. Here's my hook. I'm going to find the center of my yarn. And I end up pulling out the entire center of this ball, but it doesn't matter. I'm probably going to be using the whole thing anyway. Ha ha. Oh. Ha ha. Ho ho. All right. This is a nice green. So, ribbed hat. Um, you want to make this so that it has a cuff that you can turn up, and it just helps kind of. It will help tighten it up a little bit if you've accidentally made it a little too loose. Of course, you don't have to make it so that you have a turn up cuff, but. That kind of makes it look a little bit more like a hat, in my opinion. <clears throat> so these are what the measurements for your base foundation row are based on. The fact that you're going to be turning up a hood, turning up the cuff. If you want to measure yourself or the person you're making it for, because that person is handy, take your measuring tape and you're going to take the bottom. So the, the, the bottom measurement one, <clears throat> and you're going to hold it on the middle of your forehead and you're just going to wrap it back to the center top of your head and whatever that measurement is add two inches for the cuff and another inch just because <laughs> so that gives you some play because you don't want your hat to be squished against your head and you need a little bit of play for the cinch in when it gets to the top so that measurement from your forehead to the middle top of your head plus two inches for the turn up plus another inch. So plus three inches altogether. So for me, that ends up being around 10 inches. Um, and like we said in the description box, if you don't have a head handy, we do have some common sizing. This first measurement is the row length measurement that you want. And that is how we're going to base our foundation chain. So I'm gonna roll, take my, my little measuring tape here. I'm gonna lay it out flat, grab my yarn and my hook. We're all starting with a slip knot. There we go. And we're going to start chaining. You want to chain a length that's not tight, but not too loose, that measures the length of your target row length measurement. So for me, I'm going for 10 inches, but I want you to err on the side of a little long or a little big rather than not long enough, because sometimes our rows tighten up a little bit on us and you might lose a little bit of that initial length from your foundation chain. Uh, the number of chains does not matter because you're going for a measurement, not a stitch count here. 
Um, but we are going to count it up at the end, just so you in your own mind know how many stitches you should have per row. So what have I got? I've been chaining. I probably have too many. So I've chained my length. Um, there's a little bit of stretch. I don't want to stretch it. I just want to put one end at the zero, not the one. Sorry, did I say one earlier? I meant zero. At the bottom of your did you mention chain. the hook size? Uh, yep, yep. Someone asked about the hook size. Eight, really. nine, or ten millimeter. It's a big hook. Okay. An eight for U.S. reference is an L or an eleven, or a hook slightly larger than that. But you can use any hook you if want. If anyone uh, knows the answer to any of the questions in the chat, please go ahead and um, put it in the chat. It helps everyone out. Yes, and we will have a few little extra information things in the description box. But like we said, this is going to be a free pattern available on our website by Tuesday. And once we have it up, we'll make sure that we, we message you all via the, the community uh, post yes. section. Okay, so I've done already gone way over my target number here. Um, <laughs> so I've got... I've, lied, I've laid it against my measuring tape. Here's my 10 inch mark. I'm just gonna take back my chains. It's just one over, because I just always want to err on the side of a little too much rather than a little too less. Hats are always, it's always good if you have a little extra up top because you can either have a, a bigger brim turn up or a little less and a little more room up top. This is a very flexible hat. So don't, don't fret <laughs> if you've never made a hat before. Ding, ding. Super chat. <laughs> this super chat's from Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Thank you. Andrea says, I turned 45 last week, so this is a late present. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Andrea. 45. Nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. That is. That's good. Good year. Good, good age. It's, it's a big accomplishment. It is, really. <laughs> Hitting 45 is a big accomplishment. It's the... Uh, you can pat yourself on the back yes, for that one. Yes, yes. There's a, definitely hit a wisdom, a wisdom a, uh, a level landmark. Of, a level of wisdom. <laughs> mm. Love it. Okay, so we have... Make, make sure your foundation chain row measures your target row length measurement with maybe one or two chains over just because you don't want it to be too, like... You want to err on the side of big. Then... Pick it up, put it on your hook, add one more chain. So that one chain is the turning chain. Doesn't matter whether you're using the single crochet stitch or the half double crochet stitch, because remember you can use either stitch you want for this. Um, you're only ever going to have one turning chain on the end. So whether it's single or half, you're only worrying about one turning chain. Then you can count up your chains. So I'm gonna count mine up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 26. So including my turning chain, my foundation chain is 26 chains long using an eight millimeter hook. I'm going to use the single crochet stitch. Like I said, you can use half if you want. Um, and all we're gonna do is crochet. So whether you're using single or half, crochet into the second chain from the hook. So skip over that first chain <laughs> and then just crochet your chosen stitch Lynn says, ha ha, just wait till you're 70. Oh, then the wisdom just like skyrockets. <laughs> hmm. Yes. I, I, I of think course. I would I would have to agree with that. Imagine statement. that level of experience. <laughs> yeah, imagine that level of course. Hope my, my wrists hold out till then. <laughs> we'll keep them oiled. We'll, we'll keep grease. them oiled. <laughs> Give me that. I'll avocado keep squirting oil. them with uh, with those grease uh, cans, you know, <laughs> while you're working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I hear a little crinkle in there. <laughs> Squirt, squirt, squirt. <laughs> all right, so all we're doing is just a single crocheting or half double crocheting, whichever stitch you want to use in each chain all the way back to the beginning. Because I started with 26 chains, I will have 25 stitches in my row and I will have 25 stitches in every row from here on to the end of my hat. So whatever your foundation chain count was, you will have exactly one less for a stitch count. So if it was 26, you'll have 25 stitches, whether you're using single or half. If it was 50, you'll have 49. So see how that works? When you get to the end of a row, so there I go, I'm at the end already. I've got 25 stitches. Um, I'm going to just measure it against my measuring tape. So let me get my hook out of the way here. Measure it against my measuring tape and make sure I haven't shrunk. It's okay if it's wider or longer than your target measurement. You just don't want it to be smaller than your target measurement. And I am a good inch over my target measurement, so that's fine by me. I don't mind having more brim or more space up top for my brain to breathe. <laughs> Big now, thank you to Naughty Kamiya Creates. Naughty Kamiya, thank you. Naughty, Naughty Kamiya. Kamiya, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. A very thankful thank you to you too. 
Um, okay, so now same thing. If you're using single crochet, stick with it. If you're using half double crochet, stick with it. No matter what you're doing, at the end of every row, chain one, turn your row, and then to get that ribbed effect, we're going to be using the back loops only of every stitch for every row going forward. So this really is a turn your brain off thing. Just remember you want the back loop. Back loop is always the loop furthest away from you. So you skip your turning chain, that'll be this one right here, always the one that's right after your hook. And instead of going through the whole stitch, which would give you two loops right across the top of your hook, you're going to use <laughs> the furthest loop away from you, the back loop only, and you're just going to single or half, whatever stitch you're using, crochet in each back loop only, all the way across. You'll still have the same number of stitches that you did in your first row. And you're going to start seeing that lovely ribbed effect happen. This ribbing is not only pretty and <laughs> creates a nice texture, especially when you're using the bulky weight yarn, the super bulky yarn, but it gives it more stretch and a nice stretchy hat is always good. I'd like to share this with you. This yes. is for one of our channel members, Digital Pommy. Hi, Digital Pommy. <laughs> Digital Pommy says, just hit 60. <laughs> the other month, got a gorgeous crafting cottage built on our property for me. All mine. No one else can use it. Oh, the <laughs> ultimate she shed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am so jealous. <laughs> that does sound like the ultimate she shed. It's an escape. Oh my gosh. Nice. Oh, that sounds so I hope nice. you have a really big padlock on that, that little cottage. <laughs> well, very happy. Make sure no one else day. can use it. And congratulations. And that sounds amazing. I love it. My very own crafting she shed. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. Goals. Where's that little hashtag goals? Then I'd be like squeaking against the windows. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It looks kind of cozy. Is that is that fresh coffee in there? Is that a wood stove? Is that Get a away. wood stove? <laughs> tap, 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 tap. You and the chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> Open the door, toss out some nuts. <laughs> okay, when you get to the end of a row. Stay focused. Make sure that you don't miss that last stitch. And you can do that in one of two ways. You can count up all the stitches you've already made, make sure you've got your target number. If you don't and you're one shy, that means you've probably not quite done the last stitch. On that first row, if you're using single crochet, the end of it looks a little squished, a little, a little tiny, so don't, don't miss it. But it's still, the top still looks like a stitch. If you're using half double crochet, just remember that the half double crochet stitch at the end of a row is always kind of, it kind of, pulls down the, the corner a little bit. So here's the second last stitch in the row and here's the the pull the part that sort of pulls down the edge. I'm, and I hope I'm, is that showing Mr. and Stitches that I'm? Well, you know, I was actually just answering um, Retta. There's not yeah. much we can do. This is a live tutorial and our internet speeds are not. It's gonna look pixelated. So it's gonna look blurry, it's gonna look pixelated. And if, if I zoom in even more, I'm worried that it'll be even blurrier, but I can try. That's why I'm gonna explain what we're doing as we go. And that's why we're doing a really simple pattern. So yeah. there's not a whole lot to look at. It's just kind of counting once you get past your initial measurement. Just to okay, be reminded. Okay, tell you what, I'll, cl I'll zoom in. Sure. And um, everyone in the chat, let me know if that's better or worse. All right. Um, so let me see how let me see how close I can get in, and then we'll. Uh, it's going to be blurry, everyone. There's not there's not much we can do about. All that. I want to just sort of demonstrate is that if you're using the half double crochet stitch, that last stitch of the row is always going to be sort of just down the edge of your fabric a little bit. So don't miss it. That's all I'm saying is don't miss it. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna just kind of pull down the edge a little bit. Um, so, I would like to welcome a new member. Hey. Big welcome to Christina. Hi, Christina. Joined Alpaca Level. Thank you for joining. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you keep an eye on the community tab and you, and members posts. Yes, and members posts. That's where the, they, and they all show up in the community tab. Yes. Or the community line. But if you're subscribed, obviously, it'll show up it'll in your subscription feed. Yes. <laughs> habita, habita. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So just that's just a little reminder for those of you using the half double crochet stitch. You just make sure you don't miss that last stitch of the row. It always kind of pulls down the edge a little bit. Uh, remember to continue using back loops only. Chain one when you get to the end of the row, turn your work and continue using the back loops only, which is that loop furthest away from you in each row. And that is what creates that lovely stretchy ribbed effect. 
and then off you go. And you'll have the same number of stitches in every single row. That's why this is such a lovely, fun, turn your brain off, <laughs> simple hat pattern. Do you want to just repeat the last little set of instructions? Because we were um, messing with the camera. Sure. Um, when you get to the end of the row, chain one turn. The last stitch in every row will be just just a, just a reminder to try not to miss it. And if you're not sure, count up the stitches you've done so far and you will always have the same number of stitches in every row. So make sure you've hit your target number, whatever that is. Um, it'll always be one less than the number of chains you had in your foundation chain row. And once again, that's a foundation chain row that matches your target row length measurement based on your hat measurements or <laughs> the common measurements in the description box. Zoomed in is more brief. Okay, so zoom it that's out. What I... Nobody needs to see this um, super yeah. close up because I'm just, I'm just using a single crochet stitch. I think you all know how to do that. <laughs> and I'm just single crocheting into each stitch um, using the back loops only as we go. When I get to the last stitch of the row, I make sure that I don't miss it with the half double crochet, especially it's kind of pulled down the edge a little bit. Um, but then, well, thanks if I count for up, I know I've got the same Thanks number. everyone for the feedback. We're gonna go back to zoomed out back because zoomed it is out. a bit clearer. So now I'm just, I'm just gonna be crocheting in every single stitch back loops only all the way across for every single row, chain one turn at the end of every end of every row. And I'm going to be doing this for a while. So let's talk hat costume stuff. We had a few family members mention that maybe having a quick chat about Halloween hats or how to turn a hat into more of a costumey thing might be kind of handy. Um, so I'm going to throw out a few of my favorite tips. And if any of you have got sort of questions about hat construction or costume hat construction or what you can do to a basic hat to make it feel a little bit more costumey, then um, feel free to ask questions in the live chat. Mr. Stitches will do his best <laughs> to find them and uh, read them out to me. <clears throat> but first and foremost, if you live in a cold climate and it's pretty chilly here, I have a funny feeling, thanks to 2020, that um, Halloween might actually be canceled for us this year. They're kind of threatening that right now, in which case we probably won't see any little ghosts and ghouls. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be private Halloween Candy parties. Candy in the house. No, private Halloween parties. Chocolate in the house. <laughs> <clears throat> See, so, we finish each other's yeah, sentences. Yeah, we fit, it may not be the same, <laughs> the same finish. <laughs> anyway, something to keep in mind. If it's going to be outside and it's going to be cool, then you want to make a hat for your little trick-or-treater that's going to be warm. Um, so Here, here's a question from sure. Crafty Chats. Is a single crochet the same as a double in Ireland? Do you know that answer? <clears throat> yes. So if you're using, we actually have a handy little conversion chart over on our website on the tools page between UK and US or US and UK. A single crochet in, um, I believe a single crochet is like a slip stitch. So when I say single crochet, that would be a a slip stitch in the UK. And when I say double crochet, that's actually a single crochet in the UK. That's if you're using UK terminology, please fact check me on that. We do have the um, the translation thing on our website. I think Mr. Stitch is gonna just toss the, the link in the chat there when he can. But yes, there is a difference. We do use US terminology um, here in Canada because actually I, I can read both, but I find most of the patterns that I wound up getting my hands on when I was learning crochet eons ago were primarily US terminology. Um, so that's the one I'm comfortable with and that's the one we typically use. Uh, actually, it's the one we always use. I, I don't use, <laughs> I, don't, I don't write or teach in UK, UK terminology. <laughs> <laughs> But we do have that translation chart, uh, just in case you're kind of going from one to the other. Uh, because that way you can have a broader selection of patterns at your disposal. Um, okay, so back to Halloween kind of related hat things. If it's going to be outside, make a hat that's warm. If it's going to be inside and you still want to use a hat, go for something that's cool. How do you make it warm? How do you make it cool? Fiber has a lot to do with that. So uh, acrylic tends to be pretty warm because it's um, not a very breathable fabric. So acrylic, polyester, um, for example, if you were making this hat using burnout blanket yarn, that's a polyester yarn. That would be very warm to be wearing outside. And I have made hats out of that stuff um, to wear on the ski hill and my ears are always nice and toasty. Um, wool is a very warm, a breathable fabric. It's natural, but some people have an allergy to wool. So I would be kind of careful about using wool. Cotton is cooler. 
Um, it's also breathable. It's also natural. So cotton is a nice choice for a hat um, if you're going to be wearing it indoors, um, especially or if you're going to be outdoors and it's not too, too cold. And also the kind of stitch you make. So if you're making a hat that's like a, got a great big brim and it's got a big heavy pom pom on top, that's a warmer hat. So you might not want to use that for an indoor costume, but something light like a thin fabric. So using a thinner DK weight yarn or a, a lightweight size three yarn and a smaller hook, that's gonna make a, a thinner fabric. Um, if you use the cotton, it'll be cooler. And if you use a pattern with sort of a lacy stitch, it'll be sort of like, there'll be more air holes in it. And so it'll be able to breathe a little more. Um, berets are nice cooler hats because you can sort of wear them at the back of your head, but it depends on the costume you look you're going for. So I would start with the fiber. And I would start with thinking, is this going to be used for indoors or outdoors? Is it going to be cold? Is it going to be hot? If you're going to turn it into a character related hat, um, look first at the costume you're trying to emulate. Is this an existing character, like an anime character or a cartoon character? Take a good look, a good look at a still shot of the kind of hat they wear, or if they're wearing something on their head that can be kind of turned, the, the hat can kind of represent. So like if they have you know, I don't know, like star antenna or something. You can still have a hat made and then attach the star antenna to it um, rather than wearing maybe just a headband with a star antenna attached to it. Um, so the hat could either be literally a, a replica of the costume because that character wears a hat or it can be the base that you build the headpiece onto. So for example, animals don't wear hats unless we put them on them. <laughs> But an animal does have ears. So instead of like making just ears and clipping it into hair, which of course you can do, which is also great if you're gonna be inside, if you're gonna be outside, make the hat ears, make a hat and then put ears on the hat. Um, so it's less about the hat and more about the ears. Um, and this, so this is sort of a fun way to kind of decide whether or not you need to keep somebody's head warm and then also create a character look. Um, this is an easy hat to add ears to. So if you make this ribbed hat, you can wear it with the, the little cuff turned up. Don't bother putting a pom-pom on it, unless that fits with the costume or the character. Um, just close in the top the way we're going to do when we get to that point. And then you can uh, make separate ears of any kind. Um, you can often mix ears from different patterns and just sort of attach them because you make them typically separately anyway, and then just attach them to the hat based on where they would look right. So this is handy. You make the hat, you put it on, and then you stand in the mirror and you kind of decide where the ears should go. So for example, cat ears kind of sit straight up. Uh, you know, bear ears sit a little more sort of down. Rabbit ears could be up top or kind of to the side, or even if they're lop ears, they could hang down. Uh, loppy ear dogs, same thing. They could sort of hang down to the side. Um, and so putting the hat on you or the person you're making it for and sort of deciding mm -hmm. where the ears should go, that's where they'll sit when the hat's on. So like sort of place them where you think they should be and then just like tap them into place. You can use pins on yourself carefully or um, little stitch markers or stitch um, sort of um, those nice blunt ended, they're like safety pins, but they're for um, knitting. I'm not sure what they're called. I thought they were just stitch markers, but they kind of act like a safety pin, but they're plastic and they're soft, so they're not gonna hurt you. Uh, or you can use clips if it's big enough ears. If you're looking for a pair of cat ears, we have a cat ears headband tutorial and the ears are made separately. So you can always use the same um, hook size and the same yarn you're using for your hat and just follow that, that ear pattern and then just attach the ears onto your hat wherever you think they belong. Um, in our in our Etsy shop, we have um, a bear ears headpiece and a bunny ears headpiece. And again, the ears are made separately from just the plain little sort of like head head um, piece. Um, and you can use that same ear pattern and attach it to a hat or to the headpiece, whatever you're looking for. Um, that little headpiece in our, the pattern in our Etsy shop is flat and it ties on with a ribbon. So if you're going to be indoors, that's a nice way to make um, a little earpiece using bulky weight yarn, but without making it too hot. Or like I said, you could use this hat pattern and just stick those ears on it, however it fits. I'm uh, still single crocheting along here. How's everybody else doing? You've got a few, how many rows am I in my man? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm on my eighth row. 
And I'm just... um, I think there were a couple of, of questions sure. here. One was from Crafty Chats. Do you skip a stitch after the chain one every row? No. So you chain one. That's your turning chain. You don't use your turning chain. It just allows you to get out the end of your row and turn around and go back. So the turning chain is just its job is just to turn you. You don't actually use it. When you're single crocheting, or in this case, half double crocheting, you immediately use the first actual stitch. You don't skip it. If you were double crocheting, you would have more turning chains and th those would probably count as a stitch. But when we're making the smaller stitches, we don't bother using turning chains as like a single crochet or a half double crochet. All it does is just turn you around. So you turn your chain, you chain one, you turn and then ignore it and just use every single actual stitch. Great question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, let me see here. The strands, are you, are you, you're just using one, you're not doing two together, No, nope. right? I'm using a super bulky weight size six yarn. If you don't have any super bulky weight size six yarn, you can use two or three strands of a size five or a size four yarn held together. If you're using DK yarn, uh, which I would put in the size three lightweight category, um, then maybe three or four strands of that but it doesn't really matter. You just want to go for sort of a nice bulky feel. Um, that will make the hat warm. Uh, but because we're not basing it on an actual stitch count, we're basing it on measurements, you can technically use Let, anything you want. Let's flip to the main camera and maybe you can show it uh, close up sure. so that everyone can see a little clearer because it is, it is a little bit blurry. Yeah. It, it's a decent amount blurry on that other camera. Okay, so this is just... Just single crochet, that's that nice ribbing. So the hat is gonna do this, right? But we're building it back and forth um, so that we're gonna make one long rectangle that basically wraps around our head, seams up, and then the top gets cinched shut. Super basic, easy construction, uh, which is why I feel like a great crochet along kind of hat and a really nice base for costume building mm -hmm. because you can, you can sort of turn it into a regular old hat or you can turn it into a hat with ears or you can turn it into a hat that has some kind of character association. You can stripe it if you want. Oh, that's something. Um, if you just wanted to make a fun hat, this is one of those um, cakes that's all self-striping yarn. Bulky self-striping yarn. All of your stripes are going to be vertical when your hat's on, and then you don't actually have to worry about changing colors because the self-striping yarn does it for you. Fun. That mm -hmm. makes a really fun hat. Um, if you wanted to change colors because you wanted vertical stripes, that were very specific, like, you know, every five rows I wanna change color, then I would just finish the row, fasten off, start your new yarn with a slip stitch. Um, so you create a slip knot on your hook and then slip stitch to join, chain one, and then single or half double crochet into that first stitch and then just continue like you never changed colors. And that's how you can easily change colors anytime you wanna do that, if you wanna stripe your hat. Um, so that's an easy thing to do. Also creates a fun looking Hat with vertical stripes. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. I've got had some other some other points about Halloween costumes that I wanted to mention. Oh, you got a question? I missed the super chat. Oh dear. Thank you, every color, Cal. <laughs> Thank you, Cal. <laughs> ding, ding, ding for Cal. So every color Cal did super chat us a little bit earlier and said, how about a crochet wig? When I guess when you were asking about different hat styles. Wigs are fun. Um, wigs are also a tremendous amount of work if you're going to crochet them. If you're just going to sort of attach yarn to something like a skull cap or to a basic hat, then it's, uh, it's a little less work. But if you wanted to make like curly hair, so you were going to do that whole crochet curly thing, that's, that's, that's definitely something you want to start before October. <laughs> But um, you would probably do best to, if you were going to make a, a yarn wig or a crocheted wig, um, it's probably best to start with a skull cap, even like the, the, uh, like the nylon skull cap that you find in a lot of actual wigs. You can also use um, the, 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 
if you have pantyhose, you can use the sort of the, I want to, I guess the crotch part, it's the waistband and that bit, tie off the two, the two um, legs. So cut off the legs and tie that off. And then you can use that as a base. Now it can be a little on the, it's better to use with like tights, like a slightly more strong uh, stretchy fabric so that mm -hmm. when you're sewing and yanking through it, you're not going to create big holes, but it's, it's, if you're going to make a, a yarn wig uh, or a crochet wig it's sometimes easier to start with something like that just so it's a little bit lighter because that can be that can wind up being pretty heavy and hot depending on the kind of character wig you're going for um just making a little tiny simple crochet skull cap um with like really really light yarn doesn't have to be a, a it doesn't you don't have to go worry about aesthetics on your your crochet skull cap if you're going to attach a bunch of hair yarn hair to it um, so that's easy too. <clears throat> uh, let me think. And then um, you can just, if you're going to just use like long lengths of yarn, I recommend using the bulky weight stuff because it's, it makes the process move a little faster. And if you want to, you can kind of like brush the ends of it or unwind it a little bit. And that gives you like more bulk, more, more body sort of thing for your wig. Um, yeah. That's about, that's about, and if you wanted to make it curly, of course, there's a, you can make curls. We've got a little hat dongle or hat sort of doodad tutorial where we show how to make like a, a curly, a curly cue. It looks almost a bit like a, well, it's a little, it's a little curl. You could make a whole bunch of those, which is why I say that would take a long time. If you are wondering what that looks like, we've got a, um, a unicorn, a magical baby unicorn tutorial where we did curly hair for her her um, mane and her tail, and that's what it looks like. So if you wanted, you could make an entire hat just full of those long curls, and then it's really easy to just anchor the curls, the actual like mm -hmm. tendril at the top into that hat or whatever it is you're using as the base. That would look really, really cool. It would look actually. amazing. It would be very heavy. It would be very warm, and you would definitely <laughs> want to start early because it would be a lot of work, yes. but um, it would look really cool. So yeah, that's an option too. Great question. So how long, okay, so how wide is this so far? So far, I've made four and a half inches. Okay, I'm working on it. I think along. everyone's curious about the hook you're using. It's an eight millimeter. Um, that's just the hook I wanted to use. You can use an eight, a nine, a 10 millimeter. What kind, what kind is it? Is um, it a knit? I, mean, uh, I don't even know. I'm not sure. There might be a knit picks. It doesn't say. It actually on. doesn't say. Oh. I don't remember. It's she doesn't know, everybody. It's ergonomic, obviously. It's got a nice <laughs> grip on it. Um, I don't know. I think Mama might have bought me this one, or did I get this one? I don't remember. But it's, um, it's quite uh, comfortable. Hard to say. <clears throat> it's funny uh, that it doesn't say on it, though, eh? I remember the packaging of that one. So do the I. The ones that have the black rubber with the gold yeah. color. Um, I can see it, but I can't yeah, see the Yeah, it's name. one of the common ones we see around here. It's probably nitpicks. It, it's... It, it might be Knit Picks. I'm pretty sure What's it's What's the picks. one that has the, the rainbow colored wood? That's Knit Picks. Knit picks. But that's their rainbow wood series. Yeah, this yeah. is the rubber. I think this is a Knit Picks. I'm pretty sure. That's that's typically, yeah. we, we don't have a great huge selection. No. <laughs> I do have, a, I don't have a super big clover in a size 8 yet. Um, I think I have a 10. Clover. Do I have a clover ten? Yeah, I've got a. I also have a nine millimeter, but you know what? I couldn't find it, so I've I've squirreled that one away somewhere. <laughs> I also have a. This is a typical, um, uh, just a non ergonomic. This is a size ten millimeter. This would be a, a boy, um, probably. It's just a plain old plastic uh, hook. This works nicely too. The nice thing too about the the larger your hook, you don't often need it to be have a great big kind of grip on it because the bigger the hook, the bigger the hook grip ends up being um so that's that's another reason i like making big hook projects not only do they move along really quickly but the hooks are a little more easier to handle <clears throat> so i guess i'm just going to keep crocheting here until i've reached a length so if anybody's wondering especially if you need to run off and you want to just take this with you you just have to keep crocheting back and forth back and forth until the number of rows high it is equals the circumference of your head. So for example, my head circumference is 22 inches. So that's the number of rows that I'm going for, not the number of rows, the, the measurement of the row height. So however many rows that ends up being, doesn't matter. I'm going for measurement, not a specific row count. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be at this for a little while. <clears throat> so got to got to settle into a little rhythm here. Anna Kate says, "So excited to celebrate 400,000 subscribers with you. You deserve every single one." Thank you very much. <laughs> We're pretty excited about that. We're glad everyone's here <clears throat> on a calm, chill, calm, chill Sunday, Sunday afternoon. On the Thanksgiving long weekend up here in Canada. It's, uh, it's very nice, actually. It's sunny, which is <laughs> lovely <laughs> for us, <laughs> which kind of helps everyone, everyone brighten up the room. Everyone who's popping in and, and saying hello and has to pop out, thanks for popping in and saying hi. Yeah, feel free to pop in and pop out this, as long as This it's video here. will be um, available for replay after. Yes. Um, the quality will not improve. No. Nope. <laughs> when we go live, it, it's all based on our internet speed, which is terrible. Yeah, even our best internet, even if we have no interruptions, <laughs> our best internet isn't that great. Yeah. But uh, we're lucky we can stream Netflix. Welcome, welcome to rural Canada. Uh, welcome to Canada in general. Unless you live in one of like the major cities, you're welcome. not going to have great. Welcome to yeah. where the squirrels and chipmunks roam freely. It's true. You know what? I actually read an article that said that Canada's <laughs> internet is like ranked like 60th in the world. Like we're behind most of the, like most of the rest of the world yeah. has internet. I know. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But then it doesn't. The prices, the prices aren't ranked at the bottom. No. They're, they're ranked at the top. No, it's about. I a, love how, I love the reversal there. It's um for this internet, <laughs> this amazing quality internet that you're seeing, it's about a hundred bucks a month. It's like super expensive. Absolute trash. Yeah. So. Hmm. Well, it's the best we can do. It's the best everyone. we can do for now. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, don't worry, it's not you, it's us. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Liz says we are getting a great picture here in Ireland. Oh, that's great. In Laos. I hope I'm pronouncing how's, that right. How's your Irish? Laos. Does that sound like, is that familiar to you? Don't look at me. Laos, Ireland. Laos. Laos. Laos? Laos? It looks, it's either I or L. Can you give us a pronunciation on that? I, <laughs> I, I'm going to say I-A-O-I-S. I, I was... I A I O. Wait, say that again. I A I A O I S. I A O I S. How do you pronounce that? Oh, it is an L. Sorry. L L A I O S. Laos. La someone, someone, spell it out for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell us what the weather is. Because <laughs> and then tell us what the weather is, and what the pubs serve for yes, lunch. And Saw at the pub. Oh my gosh. La Oas. Laos. Laos. La Laos. 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 It is Laos. Okay. Sounds like leash. I'm in Dublin. Sounds like leash. Maybe it's pronounced leash. I'm not sure. I love this. <laughs> I love learning about new places yeah, love, that I'm unfamiliar with. I love I love trying to figure we out. We have greetings things. from Israel. Hi. How's the picture in Israel? Is yeah, it, can you see a clear picture? Is it is it okay? <laughs> Liz says the weather is lovely. Lovely. Oh good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you, Liz. Wonderful. <laughs> it's pretty nice here too. It's not windy. It's very sunny. Um, I haven't actually poked my nose outside today. So. <laughs> Lynn, another channel member, says, interesting fact in regards to squirrels. Yes. I am watching on my TV and, and laptop. During this video, my TV, vid my TV video and sound both have glitched, but my laptop was still working oh, fine. How about that? That could have to do with the Wi-Fi. TVs, TVs, um, TV software packages are not as good as packages you get on your laptop. That's true. So the systems on your computer, your laptop or your tabletop are not going to be, are going to be a lot better than the systems running your television software. Yes. So that could have something to do with it. Could be the Wi-Fi is being Very possible. Um, interfered with because it's in like a certain corner of the room or something, but Thanks for sharing. Um, so just to get back to if you are busy, if you're working along faster than me and you get to the <laughs> end of your target measurement, 
Um, you're just going to hold, so the two short ends, which is the, basically your last row and your foundation row, you're just going to hold them together. And then you're going to just slip stitch down the edge to create the seam. So nothing fancy here. Um, I'll show that a little bit closer um, when we get to it, at least when I get to it. But it's no different than a lot of the things we've done before on the show. Um, a lot of our hat patterns end up starting with a, um, a cuff that fits your head. And we typically slip stitch down the two M short ends together to create the seam so that we can build the rest of the hat on it. So it's exactly like any of those seams we've created in the past. And I'm thinking about the ponytail hat. That's a good one that just demonstrates that. Also, um, the cuff that we make in the easy, slouchy, perfect pattern, same kind of seam. So same thing, if you're looking for better a, a better, easier view of <laughs> what I'm going to do in a little while. That That's a place to go. And we'll make sure those are linked in the description box after this live stream ends and becomes a video. And how do you find the description box if you're on a tablet if you're or a phone? Tablet or phone, there's going to be a little tiny, almost impossible to see gray arrow. You need binoculars to see You need binoculars see to see it. A little tiny wee arrow underneath your video player. And if you click on that, it will drop the description box or open the description box up for you. And that's as of right now today, October 11th, 2020, <laughs> because they keep changing it. Um, but it's the description box is always underneath the video player. Sometimes you have to open it. Yes. Um, and sometimes it says, you know, show more. It literally says that and you click on the letters or the words that say show more. Um, that'll be on a computer or a laptop. And sometimes it's just a little arrow. It, it depends on the software you're on. So um, and if you're on apple anything i who knows what it's doing at this point <laughs> if anybody has an apple device maybe they can share in the chat uh where the yes, description if box it's is apple located. it might be completely different who yes, knows let us know let us know if it's different on a on an ipad versus like a, a samsung galaxy note or an android yeah device. any kind of android device ding 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 oh my super chat <laughs> We got a super chat from Tori, Hi, Tori. who has Thank a you. lovely icon of a horse. Oh, how nice. Very pretty picture. Is that your horse? <laughs> Is that your horse? Is that your pet? <laughs> Tori says, love you guys. It's like watching celebrities. Oh, thank you, Tori. <laughs> That's so sweet of Celebrities you. Celebrities in their bedroom. Aww. Oh, thank you, Tori. That's very sweet. Well, it's... we're just happy to have the company, really, and we're just happy to sit here and talk hats today because... Plus winter's coming, Plus winter's at least coming. on this side of the planet. Halloween's coming, so if you're looking for a, a, a simple hat pattern to build hat hat character stuff off of, then this is it. Nice and simple. Um, oh, this is looking good. Look so, Tori, to continue, Tori said, love you guys. It's like watching celebrities, and I get so mesmerized watching your hands work so easy. Oh, thank you. Aww. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. It's uh, And let us know if that's your horse. Yes, if that's your horse, please let us know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lots of congratulations coming in. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for following and supporting. and We wouldn't be here without you. Um, leaving comments and sharing videos and clicking the like button and all those wonderful things. Yes, it's been... Uh... Thank you to all our members for joining the channel. That helps us out. It does, remarkably. Yep, it keeps us going month to month. And just in case you're sort of just popping in now, there is going to be a free pattern for today's hat. Um, so if you need sort of a refresher or you want some extra kind of information, we're going to put this all together into a free written pattern. It's going to be over on our website. It'll be up by Tuesday this week. So that's October the 14th, if you're watching this later. Um, and when we do post it, we will also make sure we put a note in our community feed. So if you're subscribed, um, if you're a member or you're subscribed, it'll show up in your subscription feed. And if you have your notifications turned on, it will appear in your little notifications area, which is that little bell shape um, that's up near the top of the screen. And I think that goes for whatever device you might be on. That little bell is your notification thing. Um, so that is coming. And I, the reason we <laughs> haven't posted it yet is because I wanted to be able to have a photograph to put on it. And I thought it might be fitting to have a photograph of the hat I end up making today. <laughs> so however long this takes me to make, that's how long we're going to be sitting here. So put your feet up, get a coffee. <laughs> it's um, a crochet along. I love it. Our family videos would like to see more videos with Mama and Stitches. We are working on Mama. Yep, we are. Mama is uh We spent a beautiful shy. day in the park yesterday that having our nice. thanks, one of our Thanksgiving uh, 
little get togethers. Get togethers. And yeah. we uh, we were with Mama and Stitches. We were sitting under a gorgeous, gigantic tree that had yellow sugar leaves, maple. And they were just slowly falling. <sighs> it was so beautiful. It was really nice. And we were Smell watching really the um the geese, the, the Canada the geese. Canada geese prepare their their young ones, yes. their kids, and they and they they teach them. They have like their little places where they teach them and they prepare them for the big flight yes. down south. It literally looks like a flight academy. It looks like you're watching a flight academy. It is so enjoyable they, to watch them talk to each other. They break and, into groups. Mm -hmm. They take turns taking off. They do land takeoffs. They practice water takeoffs. They do a big, long 30 minute, 45 minute loop. They leave. You don't see them. They and do then, short loops. Long and then they loops. all hook up with each other and they all come back. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of geese and they come back and they just sound like an invading army hong, 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 hong. you're like whoa it's impossible to miss and then they, they come in and they land either on the lake if that's the day they're practicing that or they land on on the ground so they practice different takeoffs mm -hmm. and landings and uh, and it's great and the ones that are waiting so the, there's the a group will take off and all the group uh, that's still down there will hong, 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 kind of cheer them on and, and off they go and then they disappear and then a few minutes later another group takes off it's really neat <laughs> looks just like a flight school yeah, we were entertained watching that yesterday. It doesn't take much to entertain us. <laughs> it's such a neat thing too to see. I like, I like, I like, I like how a whole bunch of us have different. Um, like here, we have on the Thanksgiving weekend, we have like little traditions, us humans, and then the birds have little <laughs> traditions too. Lori says her dog started looking for you when you were honking. <laughs> like what's that what's Ooh, that that sounds good that sounds good i'll sink my teeth in i want to go attack that <laughs> that is hilarious Aww. mama and stitches was co uh, was collecting the feathers mm -hmm. from all the birds and she brings them back to the little kitties yes the kitties think and fun. they just love them yes they love playing with those feathers yeah the, the, they, they sit around and they they preen and of course all those little feathers land on the ground and um if you're savvy you can anyway i highly them. recommend that if um if anyone has geese that hang around in their, you know, parks or their yeah, if your local areas, park has a I pond. highly recommend going in the fall and just uh, hanging out and watching them do that because it's really, it's really neat. Yeah, it's neat. It's really neat. All right, I'm just to kind of check in with the hat progress here. I'm still single crocheting because that's the stitch I decided to go with. So if you're half double crocheting, you might be even further ahead than me now, uh, which is fine. That's why I said you can use either stitch but the actual pattern doesn't change. Um, I have 25 <laughs> stitches in each of my rows and that isn't going to change. So I'm every row is always gonna have the same number of stitches. So whatever number your stitches is in your row, doesn't matter if it's the same as me or different, um, it'll be the same throughout. That's the most important thing. So I'm just gonna measure. <laughs> I've got nine inches here so far, not bad. Um, I, want, I would like everyone to rate Jada's Canada Goose uh, <laughs> impression. <laughs> Because uh, our family video says that um, they really enjoyed your impression. My, well, so I, mean, that was, I would give Jada's impression. I'd I would, give it I like would a say three. maybe I'd give it a six out of ten. I, I'd give it a three. If I were to be honest, hon un unbiased, <laughs> I'd say a six out of ten for your, your goose impression. I think you could do better. I said honk. I used the onomatopoeia honk, <laughs> but I didn't actually try to honk like a Well, we don't want to blow the I microphone. I don't want to break anybody's eardrums. We need that microphone. And I need <laughs> and I I need my eardrums today. <laughs> It's what a, a thousand out of ten? No way. She did. She does not deserve a ten out of ten for that. It's a very that goose impression. It's a very unique honk too. It doesn't sound like six. Other geese. Six out of ten max. Honk, honk, That's honk. my vote. Six out of ten. You're getting. You're getting it. solid nines. <laughs> Nine point five from Amy. Ten out of ten from Anna. Are these people that haven't heard of Canada Goose? <laughs> Jada's goose impressions is a ten out of ten in dog points. <laughs> Okay. Hey, if the dogs were going after you, Aww. like looking behind the, the TV screen, honk, 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 then honk. I guess, I, okay, I'll bump you up to a seven. Bump you up to a seven? Yeah. I'll, get, I'll, get, seven. I'll give you a seven out of ten for the In dog points? Aw. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 9.9, 9, says Naughty. They also, um, if you're lucky enough to have a have a V formation <laughs> go overhead. Lori says six <laughs> out of ten. Excellent honk, but it needs to be louder. It, oh, yeah, it does. But before that, I have to leave the room and <laughs> unplug the microphone. <laughs> they're loud. They're loud. But you know what? They're what. What I like too is that their 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 wings creak. 
So if they fly overhead and they're close enough, you yes. can hear their wings creaking, yes. like creakity, 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 yeah. creakity, creakity. It's amazing. Aw. They're big birds. They are really they big. They are birds. big. Um, a lot of them at this this one particular park are so used to humans that if you're having a picnic and they decide they like kind of what they smell, <laughs> they'll just sort of, they're not, they're not aggressive, but they'll just sort of stroll over to your general orbit and be like, <laughs> hey. hey. What you got in the bag? <laughs> you got anything there? <laughs> I don't think you're going to want this. Yeah, hey, it's, uh, it's fried you. <laughs> <laughs> Try me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You never know. Those, uh, those uh, well, fries? Well, does it come with fries? Yeah. I like fries. Oh, hand me that fry. Uh, mm -hmm. You're still getting 10 out of 10. I think there's some bias here in the chat. I think there might chat. be a little bit of bias. There's some definite bias. And possibly people who haven't... <laughs> Here's a good question. <laughs> Here's a cheese. question from Julie. What do Canadians eat for Thanksgiving? Well, so what is what is the typical Canadian Thanksgiving a meal? Um, so as far as I know, I mean, this is going to... It de depends on your culture. This is going to vary a lot, <laughs> yeah, across cultures, um, because I've been lucky enough to be at different people's houses for Thanksgiving, and it can really run the gamut. Um, <laughs> a turkey or a ham are your sort of quintessential, typical... Um, Canadian Thanksgiving main dishes. Now, of course, we've got oops. And does it become a dessert if you put the marshmallow topping on it and not if you don't mm. have the marshmallow topping? Or can you eat it with either the main course or the dessert, regardless of the marshmallow topping? Uh, sweetie, Please discuss. Sweetie, uh, the <laughs> the squirrels have attacked. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because we didn't feed them oh, today. We didn't feed them enough. Darn it all. They Are just we, didn't get enough or happening? they didn't like what they got. Are we buffering? We're buffering and freezing, so let's just um, we'll just wait a minute or two. Okay. Well, since everybody tells us that we're it, back, it'll it'll come back. It it hiccups like this once in a while. Right. Well, that actually gives me a chance to sort of sip along a little faster with my crochet. You might have to repeat what we uh, what will. the typical meal is. Sure. Little bit of everything, really. Yeah. Um, but if you want to say like it's the special. quintessential classic turkey, turkey, ham. stuffing, yep, stuffing, gravy, ham, lots of like squash, potatoes, um, cranberry, <clears throat> cranberry sauces, yeah, jams, um, the the like Buns, butternut squash, pumpkin like, pie, yeah, pumpkin pie, apple pie, butternut squash soups. Butternut, butter, butter tarts. Butter tarts. <sighs> um, Yum. I should make a pie. Now I'm hungry. Yes, you should make a pie. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> I hadn't yet decided on a dessert. When is your Black Friday? Same as the USA. Yes, we don't do that here, but now we do because of you guys. So, um, so thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. For making us go broke. <laughs> so yeah, actually, our Black Friday is Boxing Day. Um, traditionally, That's what it used to be. <laughs> traditionally, um, you used to, you know, Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, would be the day that that all the stores put on a great big sale and tried to sell off anything that they didn't have. And that's when all the really good deals were. That was traditionally um, sort of the case. I and mean, I'm thinking back to the 80s, early 90s. But then, um, like so many other uh, American cultural icons, it kind of gets exported up here to Canada. And we all kind of just go for it. Like, I think it started with people crossing over the border on the on Black Friday, America's Black Friday, to sort of take part in the shopping extravaganza because it looked like a lot of fun. And there are often some good deals to be had, from what I hear from my friends. Um, and then I guess people up here, there's a lot of American owned companies up here and they just started doing the same thing. They would say, hey, you know, it's Black Friday and it's the same day that you guys have Black Friday. Um, and they just have a Black Friday sale. And it started and it was like a little thing. Maybe it was a little flyer. Maybe it was like a little door crasher thing, really small. And it's steadily grown and grown and grown and grown to the point where people will take the day off now to go Black Friday shopping here, even though that's just, it's just like this one standalone day. It's not associated with a holiday here. It's not associated with like a long weekend or anything. It's just a shopping day. And it's, um, I don't know. A lot of people get their Christmas shopping done that day. It's kind of become like a like a planned scheduled. Oh, we'll all take care of the the kids' presents that day or whatever. Um, but it's not really associated with anything else. It's just kind of like a fun shopping day. Um, and I'm sorry. Are we are we talking about Black Friday or Boxing about, Day? We're talking about actual Black Friday, not Boxing Day. 
the problem with these events is that the um, the commercial world keeps trying to get ahead of each other. So instead of making a day special, they start like they're like, box, like boxing week. week. It's a month, you know, and, yeah. and a Black Friday week. Early and then, Boxing Day. And then it becomes uh, Boxing Day month and Black Friday month. So they would just stick to the one day. Yeah, it, make it, it, special, it would make it a lot more special. It'd be fun. But I also want to say, like, we have we have a really funny little um, Boxing Day Canada Canada Black Friday story to share with you Ooh. <laughs> remember when you went to get your is this going to be embarrassing no your playstation do you remember that okay so yes! I, I know this i know <laughs> this is not the case for all of america obviously okay. because the stuff you see on the tv is only partially true sense sensation but, but of course we know that sometimes in some places like there's some crazy madness around a Black Friday event where, you know, people end up getting crushed or there's, you know, the doors get smashed in or something. You know, we all have seen the silly clips on YouTube, but we know that's not everywhere and everyone. But here we, there's this, also this common joke, stereotypical joke about how polite Canadians are. And this we, we kind of sometimes you see your own stereotype and you can't help but laugh really hard at it. Uh, Mr. and Stitches wanted to get a new PlayStation. And of course they had come out and he, he was sort of saving up for it. <clears throat> and he finally decided he was watching, you know, watching the deals and he realized there would probably be a pretty good deal on for the new PlayStation. This is the old PlayStation, by the way, not like the new one. Um, but he thought, oh, you know what? They're going to have it. They're going to have a, a Black Friday deal. Um, I think I'm going to go and get it at the local Walmart. Oh, okay. So we all go down. Well, of course, other people have seen this same ad. And of course, we all show up, you know, fairly early in the morning and everybody walks in nice and orderly and they, everybody kind of goes to the department that they're interested in. And then <laughs> we, we went to the electronics department and there were probably what, five or six families? Yes. All just standing yeah, around. It was, okay, I'll let you stand, tell it. You know, they have everything in behind glass doors. So like somebody has to come and open the door and get the thing for you. So there's like six families, most of them with children, obviously. <laughs> all standing in this little semicircle around the cabinet that has the, the PlayStations. It's first thing in the morning, there's only so many PlayStations to be had, you know, cause it's a deal. And the person, the Walmart employee comes over and there was literally two minutes of, oh no, you were first. Oh no, please. Oh no, you, no, please. Oh no, you know what? I think you were here first. Oh, were you here first? I'm so sorry. Here, no, after you, no, after I think he was first. And I'm like, <laughs> the Walmart lady was <laughs> sitting just, there going, I just want to serve she's someone. She's like, I've got one for everyone. It's, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, so, you know, your own, that, that's the Canadian stereotype it was very, writ large. It, it, was, it literally was the Canadian stereotype, yeah. and, and then, of course, we all ended up giggling because yeah. <laughs> that's what we were doing. Were you first? No, you were first. No, you please, after first. you. No, I'd no. like one PlayStation, please. And can I have that game? Yes, of course. <laughs> so cute. And then, and then we all stood there politely holding our stuff so that she could finish, and then we all went over to the cash so that we could all stand in the line and politely check our stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was cute. Uh, for the record, everyone, we love the Black Friday uh, sales and deals. Any excuse and, to get excited and the, about and something. The, um, we also love the Boxing Day stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we kind of we kind of go through waves of participating. Some years we kind of participate for fun, and Depends other, other years we just kind of let it pass by. And yeah, if we're if we're looking if we're thinking about getting something, we'll kind of see what deals might be coming, and we'll kind of track a handful of things. Yeah. Um, that's that's typically how we shop anyway. But yeah. if we know that we're kind of interested in picking up something and the possible sale day might be coming, then we kind of track it for a while and it makes it fun. Um, we have a super sticker from Sherry. Sherry, thank you, Sherry. Cherry. Cherry. Cherry B. Oh, oh, Cherry, thank you. Cherry bomb. It is uh, the cute little fox <laughs> dancing and sending hearts. Very cute. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, um, being thankful is the name of the day. Boxing the name of the day. day. You answered what Boxing Day was, right? Yeah, yeah. Boxing yeah. Day is the day after Christmas, and it traditionally was the day when we had all of our deals and sales. But, mm -hmm. And they still kind of do that. Traditionally, but not really. But not really. Yeah. If you want to actually save on stuff, the best time to purchase reports have shown that it is the first week of December. It's no, it, it's. It's the second, is it the either the first or the second week of December mm -hmm. when 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 um, companies are a little more anxious, they want to make sure that they, you know, take advantage of the holiday sales. And that's typically when you see the best deals. 
Um, you have to be you have to be careful with things like Black Friday because everyone knows that people are expecting deals. Yeah. And sometimes if you follow a product for like a whole year, which I do, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll actually see it go up on Black Friday and then show that it's on sale or it is discounted, but it's I've seen it for less. Yes. So, also, two weeks so, after January the 1st. So two weeks into January. Everybody has spent their money. Everybody's starting to get their bills. Oh yeah. And the 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 the, the real real the <laughs> people in in um, the mercantile world starts to panic because they don't think they're going to make any money in January. So that's when some really good deals come up too. So Cherry B is Cherry Bomb. Cherry. Well, I I, I say Cherry Bomb. Yeah, you knew. Cherry Bomb. Yeah. I, can, I can hear that song in my head. <laughs> If you're having trouble with the stream, try refreshing your page or back out and come back. Sometimes that helps. Also, it's just going to be blurry because um, we're broadcasting from Canada <laughs> in yeah. the middle of nowhere. That's just the way our live streams are going to be right now. Yes. Sorry. Uh, don't worry. Today's little live tutorial will have a free pattern that goes with it on our website. And uh, that'll be up by Tuesday of this week. And we'll make sure we put a link to it. Um, okay. So someone was asking, do we have Columbus Day? I don't think no. we do Columbus Day, but we might. What What's the actual date? Um, like, is it right now, this weekend? I'm asking questions to the chat room here. No, we don't celebrate Columbus that's like, that's definitely well we place. don't celebrate columbus day but but i i've no i found that we have a lot of holidays that align with the united states but but we have but different you want to know why they do that them. that's because we, we celebrate different things but the reason they put they they often give us the same holidays so we can hook up is because family. we're all related Woohoo! we're all family. we're all neighbors and family, family. Oh my God, I have seven rows. How many rows do you have? Um, I will count here. It looks Good like question. you have a thousand. Well, I, I don't want to be, you know, taking up everybody's afternoons. I know that's obviously the idea is you can drop in and drop out and hang out with us. And we're being, we're being. Um... Okay, so Mary says Columbus Day is tomorrow. So okay. it does, see, that's one of the holidays that align, but aren't the same holiday. But is it a holiday? Like, do you guys get the day off? Because um, we, we get. Because tomorrow, tomorrow is tomorow our Thanksgiving, is so it's a statutory it's a, holiday. It's a, we all get off. It's a national statutory holiday. Yes. So the whole country celebrates it. So I think Columbus Day is also a statutory 14. holiday for the U.S., I'm pretty sure. Well, let us know. Yeah. Education. This is great. Not only am I making a hat, I'm learning stuff. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Christina says October 12th is Columbus Day. So there you go. There's your answer. We are celebrating th our Thanksgiving and in the USA, you are celebrating Columbus Day. Nifty. I and am... then we know that um, over the years, we've learned that America's Thanksgiving is in November. Yes. And it's roughly a month before, before Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Um, for anybody interested, I've made 33 rows so far in single crochet stitch using back loops only so that I get that nice ribbed effect going. <laughs> and I've got my, my fabric is 14 inches long so far. My target measurement is 22 inches because that is the circumference of my head. Um, and if you're just joining us and you want to start working on one of these yourself, some common hat measurements are in the description box. So the first length, the first measurement, the length is how long you need your foundation chain to be. One second. Air, <laughs> air on just being a little longer. And I see you dinging at me. And the second measurement is how long your piece of fabric ends up needing to be after you've worked back and forth. So, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's my job to interrupt you. Uh -huh. We have a super sticker from Raquel. Raquel, thank you. A big thank you. It is the adorable fox everyone's going with the fox today because we love the fox the fox is really cute Aww. it looks like uh anime like japanese anime and yes. it's um going my hero mm -hmm. super cute so cute thank you we also have another super chat from yolanda hi yolanda hi thank you big thank you to yolanda Thank you for all your tutorials and tips. Well, thank you for hanging out with us and helping us get to 400,000 subscribers. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. We have tons to be grateful for and thankful for this weekend. So uh, we figured we figured we would, we would, um, we didn't realize it was all going to come together on the same weekend, but we thought, well, that's a great thing to be thankful for. So we're happy to hang out with you for as long as it takes to make this hat today. This is a real literal crochet along. You guys get to see how fast I crochet. 
when I'm <laughs> distractedly talking. Actually, about this is this is Jade at about I'd say fifty percent speed. Yeah, I'm trying to because you're of, crocheting and talking I, at I the same time and chatting. trying to answer questions. I'm also working. You know, um, I'm working in a manner that I don't usually work. So I'm working on the table just so everybody can kind of see how I work. But typically, as I as I I'm sure you all do the same thing as you, if you're crocheting something and it's getting longer or wider or heavier, you probably change up how you hold it, how you work. Um, I often stand while I'm crocheting and I sort of put one I, I, I brace one leg up on a chair or something and I work on my knee and I like to stand because I find I sit a lot because of like all the work we do. Um, so I, I prefer to stand whenever I can. And I also like to, to, I feel like I can crochet a lot faster if I'm standing and if I'm working using my knee as a brace and I'll, I'll put my foot up pretty high so that my knee is like a little higher than say my lap would be. I like to, I like to work close. To, I, I like to work close to my face. <laughs> Not that my knees like at my chin or anything, but I put my, I put my, my knee up pretty high so I can work off of it. And, uh, and then I can, I can really zip along. <laughs> You're not interrupting. I, I stopped. I'm I... sheepish, sheepishly <laughs> trying to shout out one of our super chats here. <laughs> am I going to get, am I still going to get that pie yeah, this that, weekend? The, the... <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. Now I got to make pie, a pie. Pie, 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 <laughs> pie. I would like to shout out a big thank you to Quinnell. Hey, Quinnell. Thank you. How's it going? Quinnell says, congratulations and happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for all you do. You and Mr. and Stitches are amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks you're for making out. You're making my cheeks go red. <laughs> like the apple pie Jada's going to make. Oh, now it's an apple pie, is it? Actually, we did, have... I, did you not say apple pie? <clears throat> I said pumpkin. I heard you say apple pie, pumpkin pie, and butter tarts. So now I'm expecting all three <laughs> by the end of tomorrow. I believe you said apple pie. <laughs> Pumpkin's my favorite. There is now a time limit on these pies <laughs> and butter tarts. All right. What's everybody's favorite pie? <clears throat> oh, this is going to be fun. If you're a pie eater. <laughs> we want to hear your favorite What's your pies. Favorite? And I, mean, I, I want to add to this. And it could be a savory your, or sweet. Savory or sweet. But I want to know I what's your favorite, like, pie. in general. But then what's your favorite to bake yourself oh, from yeah. scratch? Oh, those are two very different things. Those are totally different questions. Yes. And please don't, please don't <laughs> throw anything at me. <laughs> I'll steal your pool noodle. <laughs> we have a super chat. A big shout out to Katie Loves Crochet. Hi, Katie. Thank you. Katie says, you are both awesome. So uplifting and happy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's it's definitely one of our favorite weekends of the year. So okay. Are you ready to hear happy. these answers? Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Here yes. we go. Mm -hmm. Everyone get ready to get, get your napkins out because we're napkins. all going to be salivating. Mm, hi. Right, First one right off the bat, pumpkin. Yes, that's my favorite. Period. Next one, apple. <laughs> Full stop. With really adorable emojis. And a little cheese. Okay, follow up. If you eat apple pie, do you with, have it with, with sharp cheddar cheese? Because I do. Apple pie with uh, cheddar with cheese. Sharp right? cheddar cheese. It's got to be sharp. <laughs> apple again. Peach. Mm, I like peach butter. Mm, you made a peach cobbler uh, recently, which was amazing. I like that's those. almost pie. I, yeah. It's easier. I call it a, a peach, a peach almost pie. A peach almost pie. <laughs> um, chocolate pie. Ooh. Ooh. Like a chocolate mousse? Or like a chocolate, chocolate mousse, yeah. Pudding or probably. a chocolate? Key lime. I love key lime pie. I don't believe I've ever had a I was introduced key to key lime pie oh, from one of our good. family friends who um, lived back. Her family lived in Florida in near the Miami. For, key lime. Well, they still do. Mm -hmm. And, and we were introduced to key lime pie through her because of her family living down in Florida. And wow, it is so good. I love key lime pie. I should try it. I haven't had it in a long time, that though. Sounds good. Um, pecan, yes. Yes. I would bulldoze my house over. You probably for <laughs> I would bulldoze buildings for key lot for, uh, for pecan a pie. You know what? I, I have to say, if I'm basically gonna, a giant butter tart. If yes, it is a giant butter tart. That and a piece of pumpkin, and I'm set. Oh my gosh! Pumpkin says Mary. Pumpkin pie, apple, cherry, French silk pie. What is that? Please, Lynn. Please explain what that is. 
Because that that, I'm unfamiliar with fancy. French <laughs> silk pie. It sounds fancy and it's probably amazing. <laughs> um, cherry. Cherry's good. Oh, Strawberry, geez. of course. Sweet potato. Yes. Now that would be a savory pie. No. Right? No. no, it's, no. Made, it's made like pumpkin? Yeah, it's like a pie pumpkin. Really? Sweet potato. Okay. Well, I'm guessing... Prove, ask me. Uh, this is from me. <laughs> wiggle butt. Wiggle butt. Correct wiggle me butt crochet. Do you so do you crochet while you wiggle your butt, or do you wiggle your butt and then crochet? <laughs> that is how you stay in shape. Uh, it, dancing the dancing crocheter. Okay. Is the filling for a sweet potato pie the same as the sweet potato casserole that I was talking about earlier? And do you put marshmallows on top because I'm all about marshmallows. Well, Wiggle it. Butt Crochet will let us know because <laughs> I would like to know about the sweet potato pie. <laughs> also um, continuing on, strawberry rhubarb. That is a classic. It's a classic. And amazing. Mm -hmm. I make it, Susan says, I make it with sharp cheddar cheese and vanilla ice cream. Yes. French vanilla ice cream. That sounds amazing. Sour cream and lemon pie. Oh, that sounds amazing. Holy cow. Sour cream and lemon. We'll have to try that. Ooh. <laughs> Where's my napkin? Mm. Pecan cream cheese. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, that's not. <enough. laughs> I can't, wow. I, can't read my, I can't read it. I can't read too much more of these. Oh, my I'm gonna, gosh. I'm going to be gnawing on the corner of the table. <laughs> oh, that sounds so good. Another sweet potato. Another lemon. Yes, lemon pie. Lemon meringue. That's another I one of my favorites. Meringue. That's one of my favorites. I love lemons. Mm. Uh, so no marshmallows. I'm... No. Okay. okay. No. Ban Banofi. So now is that like banana and coffee? That's from Louise. That, that sounds, sounds like good. a banana coffee mix to me. Banofi. Banofi pie. If it's not. Blueberry, another classic. Mm. Very good. I do like wildberry pie. Let's see. Egg pie. No, I have not heard of egg pie. No. Let us know what that is. That is. Like a, is that like a quiche? <laughs> um, French silk is some sort of chocolate, right? Asks Icebox. I'm not sure. Raspberry, raspberry tart. Yes. I love raspberry mm. pie. So much. I love raspberry. I love the flavor of raspberries. I just don't like all the little seeds. That's the only thing that ever always kind of like steers me away from it. I love that flavor, but rhubarb I don't like all the crumble. Seeds. I like rhubarb. I like rhubarb crumble. I like crumbles. I like the crumble top. Huckleberry pie. What's a huckleberry? This is something that comes from northwest montana i thought huckleberry i thought a huckleberry was actually a name of like a character is a huckleberry actually a berry look at all this stuff huckleberry was a name uh, was a someone's name Huckle or a character from a story huckleberry finn yeah huckleberry finn huckleberry. i wonder if that's like a, a just a, a name general name please educate your canadian uh, friends up here please <laughs> educate the honking canadian geese <laughs> that was terrible I would give that one a four. I, I think my honk was better than your honk. <laughs> you want to give everyone a honk no, and I'll plug my ears? I don't want to give everybody a honk because it was it was terrible and I don't think I can improve. <laughs> they were honks. giving you tens, but I disagree with that uh, score. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on here. Peach cobbler, partridge pie, like a partridge berry. Yeah, let or us, or partridge a... the bird. Custard, big Custard. fan. Oh yeah. Mm. Yum, I like custard in my donuts. Partridge, partridge, I say partridge berry. Oh, but it's banana toffee. Oh, oh, that's even better. Not coffee. I was thinking coffee. Although I like I'm, that. I'm out of coffee. So am I. I'm almost out of coffee. You know what? I should have made that second pot. I'm not saying that I'm right, and we, I can we tell thought, you so. We thought the we thought the half a cup each was gonna was gonna do it for us, but it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Apple crumble, cream mm. cheese. Mm. I like cream cheese. Savory onion pie. It has apples, boiled eggs, onions, and potatoes in it. It's good with Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I think I'm saying that right. It's Worcestershire. Worcestershire. You don't say shire. You say Worcestershire. Well, I say no. Worcestershire. I say Worcestershire. <laughs> 
You have to say it properly, Jada. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Wor- Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Cheshire shosh. <laughs> that sounds good, actually. It also has uh, pumpkin. Oh, and pumpkin. That sounds amazing. Sounds like Thank you, uh, Tessa, for sharing that. That sounds like a real fall pie. That's yeah, like, that sounds like a real that's fall. A, that's a savory yeah. harvest pie for oh, sure. Oh, nice. Sounds good. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, my goodness. Caramel apple crisp. Oh, my gosh. Yes, please. Apple butter tart. Oh, boy. <laughs> Egg pie. Okay, egg pie is egg yolk and milk coming from the Philippines. Egg yolk and milk. Yeah. Is there anything else in it? Like, is it a sugary so, pie? So, like a sweet pie or is it a savory yeah, pie? Yeah, is it sweet or savory? And also, what's the texture? Like, is it creamy or is it more of a, is it cooked like in a, a crust? pastry type of... Yeah, is it cooked in a crust? Does it have a, a, a crust That topping? sounds good. I'm Similar curious. Similar to the pan, you know, the panettones you can get at Christmas? I believe they're, they're not pies. That's egg bread. That's egg bread. Yeah. It's fluffy, really super fluffy. It yeah. kind of sounds similar. Rich. Sound good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Don't hit me with the pool noodle. <laughs> super chat time. Super chat. This is from Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea says my favorite pie is shoofy. Shoofy. Shoofy or shoe fly. Shoe fly pie. It is from my hometown. Let us know how it's made or what's in it, Andrea. What's in it? Thank you for the pie. super chat. Shoe fly pie. That sounds like a song. Shoe fly. Shoe fly pie. That rings a bell. What is in a shoe fly pie? And please don't tell me flies because I'll I'll, I'll panic. <laughs> or shoes. <laughs> or shoes. Because if it's shoes and flies, um, I'll pass. But Andrea will let us know. <laughs> Andrea will let us know. For the record, in. Mr. Stitches is okay if it's shoes or flies, but not shoes and flies. <laughs> I'll have a pie with one or the other, but both, whoa, like you're going too far now. Sweet potato pie. Mm. Maria says, I'm getting hungry. Tell me about it. Us there, too. I'm like, I'm like slipping in a puddle here. <laughs> We're going to have to make ourselves a pie. Get, get a towel. All right. Where are the paper towels? Oh yeah. We can't get any. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was the latest panic. Oh my gosh. It went from toilet paper to paper towels. Now now everyone's obsessed with paper towels for some reason. It's like reusable cloths. Food, anyone? <laughs> food aisle. Chock full. Paper towels. Empty. Completely empty. Okay. 18. All right. I'm getting there. Oh, here's a good one. Um, Andrea says it has molasses and a crumbly top. Oh. Okay. Oh, I love molasses. Molasses and a crumbly top. I love molasses. Mm. Oh man. Coconut cream, yes. Yolanda, that is another one of my favorites. I think so far they've been all they've all been my favorite. <laughs> I love pecan pie. Diane. I love Did I miss your super chat? Pumpkin Diane? pie. I did. I missed Diane's super chat. Oh, Thank no. you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sisters is distracted by thinking about pies. <laughs> <laughs> Diane says, I found you a few months ago, and I'm sure, I sure am glad I did. I love wild berry pie, mm. also with vanilla ice cream. Yes. Thank you. That sounds good. Wild berry is amazing. I love we're so glad pie. you found us. Mm. Yes. Today. It's easy to get lost in the ocean that is the internet. Yes, it is. It is the ocean. But <laughs> we, we are very, very happy with our... Jada culture. and I are also very small. Our cozy so... little crochet corner <laughs> with all of you hanging out with us. And here we are on Sunday, October the 11th. We are crocheting a hat together or just hanging out, whatever you chose to do. Like I said, I'm, I'm decided I would try and make this whole thing. We talk a little bit about hats. Obviously, we're talking about pies, too. And uh, we wanted to be to be um, giving yeah. thanks for our 400,000 subs. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> and also just sort of, it's our Thanksgiving weekend. So we thought we would sort of hang out and celebrate a little bit with, with uh, our other family, you guys. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a safe way to celebrate since they kind of restricted our abilities to, to have big parties this year. But uh, another, another reason 2020 can end anytime. <laughs> Yeah, so um, lots of shared, uh, lots of shared wonderful pies here. Mm. 
Sure pies, I love it. I, uh, I'm gonna have to redecorate the craft room for, for um, Halloween, I just realized. I haven't done that yet. I usually do that by now, but it's been a busy month. This has been the, it's been, it's been a, it's uh, this year, this year, it's just, <laughs> it makes sense. Ah, everything's upside down. Okay, I believe we've got, I just wanted to double check and make sure I didn't miss any super chats or new members or anything. Um, I am getting totally distracted by all this pie talk. Oh, all this discussion about yummy pie. So we did get another super chat in. A big thank you to Naughty Kamya. Naughty Kamya, thank you. Banana cream pie is my favorite. Mm. Love to make peanut butter pie. Yes. I also love cheesecake. I have friends who are peanut butter obsessed. And when they, there's a, a peanut butter pie that comes out not too often in our local stores. And when it does, they actually run around buying them all up. <laughs> and then they freeze them so they can have a nice steady, steady uh, supply of delicious peanut butter pies all, all year long. We love peanut butter in this house too. But I have to say, I don't think I've ever had a peanut butter pie. Have you, sweetie? A, a peanut butter pie? No, I don't think so. But my goodness, I would like to. Mm. That sounds really good. Peanut butter cookies are one of my favorite cookies. I like chocolate chip cookies. I like peanut butter cookies. I like, um, I don't, I, I, I. Huckleberry Hound. That was a character. That was a character. Huckleberry Hound. I thought, I thought you were right about the Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, Huckleberry Finn. That's a character from a series, a book series. Huckleberry Finn is a friend of Strawberry Shortcakes for all you 80s babies out there. <laughs> <laughs> or Huckleberry Pie. Huckleberry Pie. That might yeah, that was what some Huckleberry like Finn is from a book. Huckleberry Finn is a, is, a, is a character name from a book. Oh, but I can't remember which one. There was a French silk. Um, we, we're still waiting to hear what shoe fly is. No, we, we found out what that we was, did? didn't we? Molasses and a crumble. That's the, that's the shoe fly, right? That was part of it, I think. Like, the t what's in it? Molasses. Shoes, it's not shoes and flies, obviously. <laughs> hey, with a molasses crumble top, I'll probably eat that on anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I got the vanilla, the French, uh, French vanilla pie ingredients there. French vanilla pie? Or what was the one that... Um... Mr. and Stitches, I think you're... You're failing in your well. Everyone is pie. everyone's chiming in with pies, and it's like the chat's really moving along. Oh, oh! I can't keep up. <laughs> I can keep up with Summer's super chat, oh, though. Oh, Summer, thank you. <laughs> the super chats like stand out with a big billboard, colored billboard. They're e they're much easier to spot. <laughs> So Summer, who plays Animal Crossing yes. uh, alongside uh, us as we play Animal Crossing. Oh, we've been collecting candy. <laughs> um, Summer sends us a wonderful super chat and says, I love sugar cream pie. Ooh. It's an Indiana thing. Ooh. It's a custard type pie. The main ingredients are, you guessed it, sugar and heavy cream. I make it often if you want me to send the recipe. Love yes, you. We would love the recipe. <laughs> please. please go ahead and send that. Yes, please. That sounds amazing. Yes. Oh Jada would love to make that for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love pie. I like I like pie. I uh I think I'm gonna have to make one. Well, now everyone in the chat's gonna be baking pies this weekend. After all this pie talk. After all this discussion about pie. Charlotte sends a super sticker of a piece of pie. Ah! Thank you, Charlotte. Oh Thank my you, gosh. Charlotte. There's a piece of pie. Is it animated? Is it doing something? Is somebody eating it? What's There's no on? animation. It's just a very good looking mm. like slice of pie. Yeah. I It looks like I'm going to say, you know, strawberry, raspberry, cherry. It's got that look to it. My hat fabric is getting pretty long here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing this along with me, let me know how it's going. I'm just going to measure it. I'm Mark also... Twain is the writer of yes. Huckleberry Finn. Yes, thank you. I yes. Was Mark Twain. I wasn't sure. I didn't want to say. I haven't read it, I have to say. I just know that character name. Ah, ah, I hit 22 inches. That was holy smokes. <laughs> it's all the pie talk. It's all the talk about pie. Um, okay, let's 
let's pop back into the tutorial for a moment, shall we? All right, I have. Can I want to go to the other camera? Or you want to keep it there? No, no, we can keep it here. Okay. I have this. Is it's not like it's difficult to see. There's nothing fine and simple. Like, like I said, if you have trouble, uh, if you want to see a clear version of what I'm about to do when I seam up the two edges, we've got plenty of tutorials where you can just sort of fast forward to the bit where we create the seam in the cuff. Um, the ponytail hat we did, the messy bun slash ponytail hat we did, is the best version to show that because it's a long seam, because it's the whole kind of hat. Um, and we'll make sure those links to those particular hat tutorials are in the description box later on once this becomes an actual um, video and not just a live stream. Um, but I'm going to explain what I'm doing. It's very simple if you've ever done any of these hat projects along with us. Um, and even if you had, we're just doing slip stitch here in a minute. Uh, what I did do though, was I kept crocheting um, every row, back loops only. So you have this beautiful ribbed effect. It really stands out because I use the, so it's the super bulky weight yarn. So it's got like this really nice, like, oh my gosh. You know, when you come up to a stop sign and it's the, the road has those like grooves in it. So you, you feel it, that's what this feels like. <laughs> um, it's got a lovely ridge feeling. So it's a nice thick texture. And it's interesting. So as opposed to it just looking like plain old single crochet or plain old half double crochet, it's got like a fun texture. I did as many rows as I needed to. I'm not even gonna count my rows because it totally doesn't even matter. I measured it. And from one end to the other, it is 22 inches. And that is the circumference of my head. Now, just to be on the safe side, because it's stretchy, I'm not too worried, but I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna pull it around. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that fits around neatly, no problem. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do now is create a seam. So now I'm gonna turn this long piece into a tube that fits around my head. I've already chained one. If you didn't already chain one when you get to this point, chain one for your turning chain. And then you're gonna take your two ends, so your last row and your foundation chain row, you're just gonna pair them up. And then you're gonna go through each set of stitches. So the first stitch from your last row and the first foundation chain from your foundation chain row. You're still gonna use the back loops only. You're going to put your hook through the back loop of the first stitch in your last row, just like you were going to start crocheting again, and then just find the corresponding foundation chain directly opposite it. So you should have 25 slip stitches, or that's my count, as many stitches as you have in a row will be the same number of slip, slip stitches you have in your seam. So just slowly work through it. Slip stitching, of course, you just like grab your yarn, pull back through everything. If it helps, just identify the next stitch as you go. Pick up the back loop and then... And don't slip stitch too tightly. Don't slip stitch too loosely. Um, and if this totally intimidates you, you can just fasten off, leave a really long tail of yarn, like three or four feet. <laughs> That would be about 120 centimeters and just sew it using your um, your yarn needle if you don't want to crochet slip stitch it. But I find this is just a little easier, a little faster. And if you just go one set of stitches at a time, you're not going to miss anything. So we have a super chat. A shout out to Diane. Thank you, Diane. Diane says, what's the best way to make a pie crust? Oh, good question. Um, do you know what I've been using? So I have to avoid gluten. So I actually am in the market for a nice gluten-free crust recipe. If anybody has one, please forward it to me. Um, but uh, I, what, up until this point, when I made a crust, I actually used a recipe from a Martha Stewart magazine from the mid nineties, uh, it was the, it was just like a basic pie crust. I am not the best person at making pie crusts. I have a great aunt who could make a crust that was just like explode in your mouth melt. And it was amazing. I absolutely loved her crust and I just I've never been able to get it. It's one of those, one of those hashtag goals is making the perfect pie crust. I'm still a hot on the track of doing that. I understand though, that a trick to getting a really good pie crust is to have cold hands and to use ice water. So actual ice water, put the water you wanna use in a bowl, put a whole bunch of ice in it, let the ice sit in it for a while and then measure your water out of that ice water. Apparently cold hands, ice <laughs> water, and then letting the dough sit wrapped in the fridge for a little while. 
Apparently, it, it works better if it's kept cold. That's the only thing I know about making. We, a we're crust. being requested to have a cooking show now. <laughs> we could totally do a cooking show. Okay. There are a lot of really good recipes. You guys know how clumsy I am with a simple cup of coffee. <laughs> Can you imagine me in the kitchen? You know what? Maybe one day I'll do a cooking show with Mama and Stitches. Oh, wow. And oh, then everyone God. can follow that show. I, I like to think I'm a pretty decent cook. Um, I also really enjoy baking. I don't, by any chance, expect that I am the best. I've worked in a few kitchens so in my mama, life. Like, uh, what are the ingredients? I don't know. But, salt, uh, garlic, I, don't know. There's garlic I just opened the fridge. Whatever. I just opened the fridge. I just opened the fridge. Is it but in my it face? Tastes it goes, amazing. This is amazing. Yeah, I don't know. Some salt. <laughs> Gals, garlic and salt. Mama is the living proof that if you cook with love, anything you make tastes amazing. <laughs> Oh, we're getting a lot of support for a cooking show. <laughs> so now we have crochet, sewing, sewing, um, knitting. knitting, looming. Yes, and cooking. Cooking. Anything else? <laughs> Farming. I don't know. Farming. The squirrels <laughs> feeding the animals. <laughs> we're getting a lot of support for a cooking show. You know what? Isn't it fun to watch cooking? Oh, by say... the way, don't hit me with the pool. Oh. <laughs> We have a new channel member. Whee! Big welcome to Connie. Hi, Connie. Connie joined doing? our silk tier. Um, just a reminder to Connie and anyone else who's new, um, you'll find the majority of our perks on the, you have to be signed into your account. Google account mm -hmm. in your YouTube app, and you will see them on your feeds, yes. or you go to the community tab. If you're not sure. You go to the community tab on our channel homepage, or you go to the members area. Yep. Or you go to your subscription feed, or you go to that little notification bell. Yeah. Um, and if you're a member, you'll even get emails. So. And remember, there's like a million. YouTube will <laughs> move you everything on you constantly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I now have a tube. It's like a big, like a cylinder here. I've seamed up the edge. Um, if you think the seam you created is too bulky, you can always turn it inside out and hide that seam. No big deal. I kind of like my seam. It really won't show. It'll sort of totally disappear, I think. Um, then it doesn't matter if you've got an odd number or an even number of rows when you're finally put the thing together will determine whether your short tail is on the bottom or the top. Doesn't matter. You're just going to weave that thing in anyway. So um, there is no right or wrong number of rows. It just needs to fit you. Seam the two things together and before you fasten off, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to cinch up the top nice and simple. So you want to leave yourself a nice long tail of yarn. Like I'm going to give myself like at least 75 centimeters or like two and a half feet. <laughs> <laughs> Woodwork. Woodworking channel. We could do that. We could. Stained glass. You could teach that. Stained glass, eh? We need a, that was our, we need our, a messy shop. Our, for that. our first ever date. <laughs> okay Whee! looking good so here's our long tail we're going to thread that up in the can you push that up a little toward the that's better this is better mm -hmm. so thread up your long tail um i might you know what i might before i do that i might just weave this little guy in just so he's out of my way so i'm just weaving in the short tail that was there when i started um you can do this now you can do this later it doesn't matter but i'm just going to get it out of the way Hello from New Brunswick, Canada. Hey, East Coast. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Let's see. I think someone chimed in with um, recipe. So Myra says, no cold hands. It's working quickly with the dough and very cold, but no cold hands. Hmm. So you want to work with the dough cold? The, the dough needs to be cold. Yes. But your hands shouldn't be cold. Well, I've see again, this is this is this yeah. is all helpful because, because making that making that super fluffy, like that crispy, perfect yes, uh, pastry, you need cold, you need cold yeah. dough, right? Which is why one of the things I read was that having cold hands helps. But which was great because back in the day when I was younger, I had terrible circulation and my hands were always cold. So mm. <laughs> but then again, maybe that's why my pie crust isn't that great. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. You know, make some pies. Make some pies. I'll sample the judge them, mm -hmm. and I will rate them accordingly. <laughs> All right. We are going to <laughs> cinch up the top of our hat. All you're going to do is weave your yarn needle in and out and in and out and in and out. 
through Hard the to top to little loops along the edge of the ends of every single one of those rows. Uh -huh. So just grab a loop across the top. Doesn't have to be a whole stitch. Doesn't have to be anything. The looser, the better. And then just cinch as you go. Okay. So Amy nothing, says, nothing difficult here. cold, flat. I'm not sure if that's fat or flat. Cold, fat slash fat plus hot oven equals flaky crust. So the, so cold, cold dough, hot oven. Cold dough, hot oven. So it has to cook real quick. Cold dough, hot oven. Are you learning? <laughs> Did I make notes? <laughs> I think we have a hello from Newfoundland. Hey, super East Coast. You guys are. We're, uh, we've been binging. Um, Republic of Doyle. We're Republic of Doyle. I love, love that it. show. It's so good. <laughs> and it was partridge Bernie pie. Partridge berry pie. Oh, partridge berry. Yes, and okay. I was going to say, if anybody from Newfoundland is watching, then partridge berry, cloud berries, and... Um, you have to do it with the accent. I can't do the accent proper. Come on, Senator Bai. I'm going to say the something by... Yes, my son. Yes, my son. I, okay, just full disclosure, I worked and lived in Newfoundland for a short period of time, but everybody in Newfoundland has a different version of the accent. I would just get... I would sort of get used to one, and then I would go to another inlet somewhere, and I'd be like, I don't know what you guys what? are saying. <laughs> It's awesome. Um, yes, partridge berry and cloudberry pie. Cloudberry, cloudberry is also a so pie. Cloud. Well, no, I don't. The cloudberries are pretty bitter, but I don't. I don't. Um, but I, I'm familiar with. Can you do an American accent? I don't think so. Which American accent? You guys have many. Yeah, there's so many of them. Yes, there's. Um, we sound like people in California. For some reason, we kind I don't of. Know, similar, I don't know why yeah, that is similar. Um, there's different, so there's different but, uh, accents across Canada, just like there are across, but I think there's more accents in, yeah, like, for what, example, what New York has like a whole like, bunch. Just New York's yeah. like, city alone has like 10. <laughs> it's kind of like, um, in Britain, like in, in just in, like some people you can, oh, you're specifically from this part of London. It's the same in Canada. Yeah, it's the same in Canada. New Finland, uh, there are different accents there. You go to, you go to Nova Midwest, Scotia, it's you different. That, you go to Saskatchewan, yeah, it's you have different. That, that sweet little coup that the yeah. Midwesterners have. Um, oh, and just, and you know what we learned? Okay, so you know how there's that that kind of, we thought it was actually a joke started by the um, the Second City group, but a lot of people joke about um, uh, Canadians saying a boot and um, right on, eh? And a boot, and they have this funny, like, weird... I don't know anybody who talks like that. And I thought that was actually a joke that like a TV show that we had here started yeah. until we discovered a, a YouTuber who's weirdly enough in, in um, based out of Van Vancouver, British Columbia, Trump. who actually says a boot. It's the first time we ever heard it in our life from another Canadian. And we were like, are you putting that on? And is we that a like, joke? Are you, like, is that for real? Are you playing a joke or <laughs> no, nope, it was real. No, nope, That's actually how he, he talks. He actually says a boot. And I'm yeah. like, Never heard that. Never heard a boot, a boot ever. Never. A boot. We just say about. We say about. Oh, but I have to say. I mean, does it, what does it sound like? I don't know. Who does knows? it sound like a boot? Are we saying a boot or about? <laughs> about. A, I, you have a bout of a cold, but you wear a boot on your foot. A boot. A boot on your foot. About. A, a bout of, of, of you're, you're, you have a bout of the like flu. I have a bout with the squirrels. <laughs> Every morning. Every morning. <laughs> All right, uh, back to the tutorial. I've just cinched up the top. There's probably going to be a little hole that you can stick your finger through. Um, if you be gentle when you're pulling on your yarn, you don't want to like rip your yarn. <laughs> Amy says, you do say a boot. I don't think so. I, I hear. I, I'm hearing about. Well, we say about. About. But maybe that about. sounds like a boot to some people. About. I don't know. About. About. I say about. I don't say boot. Boy, when I hear it, I'm like, what? I can't. <laughs> no, do not. All right, um, so when you cinch up the top of your hat, you might still have a little bit of a hole showing. That's fine. What you're just going to do <laughs> is you're going to continue to weave your needle in and out all the way around, just kind of weaving out the top. So you're just going to close the top in by just consistently weaving. Or if we it's not be, that big. We might be confusing everyone because we keep going back keep and forth. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm hearing like it sounds like a boot. A boot. A boot. I say, well, I don't know. Your about is definitely Canadian. <laughs> Man, I wish I had somebody else here to say about, because I'm like, how does it we sound? We need an accent translating device. <laughs> <laughs> when Canadians say sorry, it sounds like sore why. Sorry? Sore why? Sore why. 
Sorry. Sorry. Sore E. Sore E. Yeah. Sore E. Sore E. Sorry. Sorry. Because I'm seeing S O R E dash Y. Yeah. Sorry. Sore E. Sorry. 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 Oh, sorry. 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 I think I say almost sorry. You kind sorry. Of, yeah, you you go sorry. Sorry. Almost with like like a, a bit like, of an A. Um, yeah. An A sound. A bit of an A sound. I love it. I love listening. I love I love the variations in in accent. Julie I love says our about is fine. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Julie. About about. Hey, as long as we all understand each other, right? Okay. So as long as you Against. if you've closed in the top of your hat. <laughs> And even if you have like a little tiny hole there, it's okay, especially if you're going to be adding like a hat dangle or a, or a, like a pom-pom like I am. <laughs> Just take your yarn and poke it right through the top middle of your hat into the inside. And then just knot it. Knot it and weave in a little bit of your tail and then you can trim any excess. How, uh, do you feel like you need a little mini break? No, Because we've great. been going for almost two hours. Have we? Well, that's okay. That's how long it took me to make this hat. That's well, kind of fun. You are a trooper. <laughs> as long All as right. this doesn't cut into my my, new, my new pies. I'm going to trim Your my pie yarn. baking time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to weave in my tail later. But there's my hat. Okay, I'm going to try Oh, this my one. goodness. It's a hat. It's a hat. Boom. Oh. Let me swap the camera. Hold on. Does it look as cozy as it feels? That looks amazing. Cozy hat. Now I'm going to put a cute little pom-pom on top. Make sure you show it off. Hang turn on, hang on. Turn your head no, no, around no, no. so I everyone can see. I want to put my pom-pom on. I got to go for the final, the final look. Okay, should I swap back to the yeah, other camera? Yeah, swap back, swap back. <laughs> well, we'll do the final reveal as soon as I have my pom-pom on. Um, okay, so this is one of those crazy pom-poms I made during our fun little pom-pom uh, live stream. We are going to do another pom pom live stream uh, probably after we do another round of the Granny Square game. Um, we're going to try and hopefully our internet holds out. We want to get more uh, live streams in, but um, I want to show you how to make a pom pom using just your hands as opposed to using an entire pom pom machine. You know what? The pom pom's great, but it doesn't need one. It doesn't. It like, doesn't. But I want to add one because I, I made this crazy do. pom pom. <laughs> so where's my? There it is. So all if you make a pom pom, make sure you leave the long tails that you tied your pom-pom up with, leave them. And then on either side of that hole at the top or that little sort of cinched up area, you're just going to pull one down to the inside of your hat <laughs> and then pull the other one down on the opposite side. And this will help keep it sort of in the middle top of your hat. Claudia missed the start. What size yarn? Super bulky size six and any hook you like that fits with that. So I'm using an eight millimeter, an L11, or you can use a nine millimeter, a 10 millimeter, whichever one you like. Um, if you wanna do like a little sort of like sample with your yarn and your hook, just to see if you like the sizing. And you can use either single crochet or half double crochet. And there's gonna be a free pattern for this that we're gonna put up on our webpage. It'll be up by Tuesday. I just wanna have a photograph of the hat on it. Um, so look for it by Tuesday. We're also gonna post a notes it's up. But that's what the ribbed effect looks like using half double crochet. Um, there is no change to the pattern, whether you use single crochet or half double crochet. You can use whichever one you want. I went with single because I like a tighter ribbed look. And I'm just going to pull both those ends down into my hat. Another another thing with the pie crust. I'm still on pies oh, here. Yes, please. Uh, Judy says you have to work with the pie. Uh, my mother always said... The more you work with the crust, the tougher it gets to work. So you have to work fast. You have to work fast. Yeah. And someone else earlier said you have to make sure your oven's like hot, like, like preheated and hot. And it helps if you warm the tray, like the tray is also warm. Do you cook the pie crust first and then add your filling? Or do you guys do pie crust and then filling and do the whole thing at once? I love these pie tips, guys. This is our thing. I would love me some classic I, uh, American apple pie am, right now. I am going to make a pie. <laughs> I'm going to do something. Okay, I'm going to put all that in. There it is. Okay, you can, oh, look how you cute. can switch away from the, the, the thing if you want. So we're going to go to the main camera. So oh you can have everyone yes, from there. Main okay, camera. here we go. So here is my final hat. It's just the plain old ribbed. We seamed it up at the back. Um, I've added gigantic pom pom to the top. And it is like, you can turn up the brim. This is super simple, nice and cozy. Very oh my gosh, that's looking. Warm. Nice. It works up fast because it's super bulky yarn. 
If you wanted to add ears or something or gi super gigantic pom-poms or a whole bunch or crazy dongles, we have a fun hat dongle, hat doodad tutorial. Uh, it's got like three or four different hat things in it that you can just crochet. We'll make sure that link is in the description box after this live stream ends. <laughs> and uh, you can you can use those if you want. Um, yeah, this feels so... Can we see the sides in the back, please? Model, model it off. Oh, wow. That looks so cozy. This is so That cozy. is definitely clear. <clears throat> clearing the driveway in the middle of January. Yes, hat. for sure. <clears throat> <laughs> well, you're getting a lot of uh, kudos in the chat. It's Everyone so loves it. Cozy. Looks fantastic. Oh now, of course, I made this with super bulky yarn because it's nice and fast and it's super warm. But you can use this concept to uh, with just about any yarn size and any hook. It's just that the super bulky and the big hook goes so much faster and it makes a very warm, cozy hat. So the whole idea behind this is to make a really fast, warm and cozy, super ribbed, very easy hat. I think we achieved that today. We'll make sure this this this, this um, written pattern will be available on our website and we'll have some extra notes and stuff. Um, I'm just gonna basically put the final touches on it today plus a photograph of the hat. So when you print it off and put it in your project journals, you can see the picture and know what the hat actually looks like. That's mm -hmm. why we're waiting so that it's completely finished and we can put it up on the website. Diane wants to know how big is the pom-pom? This is, so I used a pom-pom maker. I'm gonna say it's- Was it one of the medium, medium to large? It's probably two and a half inches in diameter, yeah. this guy. It's a big uh, maybe three, three inches. Well, it depends. Cause if you trim it down, you know, it, you lose a little bit of- mm. But yeah, this is like a two and a half inch, three inch diameter one. Um, you can also use a whole bunch of them. You can make up a whole bunch of medium ones and like stack them all together and then have a, a like a little pyramid of pom poms <laughs> on top of your head. Have fun. It this looks is, great. It's so cozy. It looks very cozy. <laughs> well, there we go. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and for crocheting along with us, especially if you did. Um, there are some helpful information and notes in the description box. We're gonna pad that out with some extra links. So if you need to come back later and just find links to specific hat patterns or how to do a seam or something, all of that will be there. The free pattern will be available for free up on our website by Tuesday. Um, but just in case um, you forget, we're also gonna put a link to it and a note will remind everybody in the community section of our YouTube channel. So like a little, a little posting about that will show up in your subscription feed. And um, I'd, I'd also like to thank everyone who purchased our new pouch. Oh, yes. Thank you, guys. We have a new pouch on Teespring. It's a, it's, it's a bit like a pencil case, but it's uh, good for your crochet hooks. Um, yeah. Little bibs and bobs. It's eight and a half inches by six inches. So it's a pretty good zipper size. Like you can put a lot in there. Yeah. Um, so thank you to everyone who uh, picked that up. Thank you. And, uh, and supported us that way. We appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Thank you everyone who's purchased at our Etsy shop too. A big thank you to everyone for everything. If you're a member, if you've picked up one of something from our Teespring shop or our Etsy shop, or if you're just subscribed and hanging out with us, thank you guys so much. Um, we will see you soon. I don't know when exactly. This is a bit of a crazy weekend for us, it being Thanksgiving. Um, so we wanted to spend some time with you guys, our family, and also, Thank you for 400,000 subscribers. That's a major milestone and we're just so grateful and and uh, and we wanted to spend some time <laughs> and cheer with you guys. Also make a hat to get ready for the cool weather. And um, if you wanted to, you could turn this into a part of your Halloween costume, uh, especially if you're gonna be outside where it's cold. And um, I thought there was one more thing I wanted to say. Well, let's see. Let's go over. We Did wanted to let everyone know that this this is going to be a free pattern mm -hmm. on our web. Yep. It will be available by Tuesday. By Tuesday. Um, big thank you for being with us. Big thank you to thank everyone you for, for being with us. Thank you for everyone subscribed and who participates in the chat, leaves comments. Um, oh, if you make a hat, you can share it with us on Instagram or Twitter. Just add us so yes. that we, we see it. We need to be tagged because we only get there every so often. But we do get there yeah. and we do see But everything. please be aware <laughs> that we are not on there frequently. No, no. It's every not. every several weeks. Yeah, we try to but catch up. But we do catch up eventually. We do, yeah. yeah. So we will see it. Um, there is information on the hat in the description box of this video. Yep. And the free pattern is coming. So yeah. even if you're still left kind of wondering, by Tuesday we'll have the free pattern up and it'll have all the information you need. Yeah. And um, um, that's it. 
I can't think of anything else. Does anyone have any questions about the hat or the pattern or how to navigate our website or anything like that? Uh, let us know. We'll wait a couple of minutes and then we'll wrap it up for today. Did anybody manage to finish a hat or bake a pie? <laughs> <laughs> you had enough time. We've been going for two hours and five minutes. <laughs> I love this. This is so comfortable. Oh my gosh. I might not take this. Don says time. you look good in the hat. <laughs> Check Insta for a cute picture. Okay, Summer. Will do. We Thanks, will. Um, I got some Animal Crossing to go play after I make your pie. Yes. I am I am almost finished Mario Sunshine. <laughs> yeah. That's been fun. I've been enjoying that. I think I'm going to go to um, the Amigurumi King next. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Origami. Amigurumi. <laughs> <laughs> you are a gummy crochet king. husband for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get my video game. Obviously, I need pie. <laughs> Origami king. Origami king. Okay, yeah. I think I'm gonna it's go. A new paper Mary. I'm gonna go to that one next. Yes. Yes. I that or I might dip into my Animal Crossing village again and so pay for my uh, my new bridge. Yes. Because nothing is being built at my place. You have like a. a a metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like two sticks. I have to like float across rivers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, it doesn't look like anyone has okay. any specific no questions about the pattern or navigating our If our you website. do end up with any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below and we will get to them. We try to get to everybody's questions and comments on a fairly regular basis so if you do wind up with a question down the road don't be afraid to leave it in the comment section we will get to it and thank you all so much for hanging out with us today a very very happy thanksgiving to all of our canadian friends and family and we will see you guys very soon here free pattern coming we'll make sure there's a link to it posted in the uh, community pa page as well and uh, so don't worry you won't miss it uh, mm -hmm. but you can also hang out at our website for a couple days too <laughs> if you're waiting <laughs> and um we'll see you soon that's it Bye, everyone. Boop, 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 boop. Have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful holiday. Go bake a pie. <laughs> yes, bake pies. <laughs>